Re okay, ready? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Hold on now, wait, wait, wait a minute, fellas. Uh, wait a minute. I think it goes something like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A one, two, three, four, five, six. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Off of me. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Off of me. Cause every time I turn around, something trying to keep me down. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Off of me. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Off of me. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Off of me. When I look up, don't you know? Burdens knocking at my door. So won't you come and take these burdens off of me? Off of me. Oh, come and take these burdens off of me. Off of me. Somebody come and take these burdens off of me. Off of me. Soon as I get up off the ground, my burdens knock me right back down. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Off of me. Somebody take these burdens off of me, off of me. Somebody take these burdens off of me, off of me. Somebody take these burdens off of me, off of me. Well, off of me, off of me. Oh, off of me, off of me. Well, off of me, off of me. Get them off of me, off of me. Come and break the chain. Come and break the chain. Get it off of me. Get it off of me. I need somebody. I need somebody. I need somebody. To get this burden. To get this burden. Can somebody take these burdens off of me? Hey guys, how you guys doing this evening? Um, the motions for um, Jennifer is in. <clears throat> We're still waiting for the motion for the government. The government's motion is not in yet, but Jennifer's motion is in. This is the motion for the additional um, supplement. And um, I am waiting for my persons to help me with the reading. Let's see. I was waiting for her. Hold on a second, just one second, just one second, guys. Mm. Just one second. All right, just one second. Uh, hold on a second. I'm trying to see if we can go ahead and get the other ones as well. Yeah, the other one is in as well. Just one second, guys. <clears throat> I'm downloading the governments as well. Hold on. Good one second. I know that the 
government's not in. Just um, just Jennifer's. Hold on. We're waiting for. There she go. Hey, Mel. Hey, Mel. How's everybody doing? Good, 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 good. I know I I pushed you so before you can even get a chance to read it, huh? That's all good, girl. I was in the audience anyway, so it's all good. I saw the uh, I saw the notification uh, pop in. I was like, oh, let me see what's up. So yeah, yeah, I was in the audience. Okay, hopefully we'll get the other one while we're reading this one. Okay. You, re you ready? Yeah. All right, I'm going to mute myself. I go ahead and and go ahead on. And I'm going to try to find a watermark to put it on, but you can go ahead and start reading. Okay, perfect. And we're just starting on the top of the page? Yes, ma'am. All right, yes, so. This appears to be the Eastern District, New York, um, uh, United States District Court, each Eastern District, New York, uh, USA versus Robert Kelly. Um, says here, please take notice that upon the accompanying memorandum of law, Defendant Kelly, through counsel, hereby moves for a new trial on supplemental grounds dated today, uh, March 21st of this year, submitted by Jennifer Bonjean. Um, Let's see here. Jennifer states that um, she certifies that she's filed defendant's notice of a supplemental motion for a new trial of law in support of the motion via, uh, I think that's electronic court filing or something of that nature. ECF is what it's called, or it's what they, she referred to it as. Um, says defendant Robert Kelly's mem memorandum of law in support of a supplemental motion for a new trial. Um, introduction. Defendant's trial was engulfed by irrelevant and excessive bad character evidence that added little to the jury's assess assessment of whether defendant committed the charged offenses. Indeed, the six-week trial was comprised overwhelmingly of uncharged bad act evidence that served no legitimate evidentiary purpose. With the court's blessing, the government subjected the jury to a mass of repugnant conduct for the primary purpose of depicting defendant as contemptible sexual deviant. The government defended the introduction of evidence as relevant to the means and methods of the enterprise uh, with nary a word of rule 403 considerations. For reasons argued in defendant's Rule 29 motion, the government's evidence of an enterprise was insufficient as a matter of law. This case was not about an enterprise. It was about the conduct of one man who the government sought to punish for his alleged history of mistreating women. As such, the mountain of bad act evidence offered in this prosecution was nothing more than inadmissible propensity evidence because the defendant was forced to defend against dozens of uncharged claims of abusive and sexual misbehavior, much of it lawful, albeit unpalatable for some. Defendant was stripped of the presumption of innocence and denied a fair trial. But that is not all. Defendant was denied effective assistance of counsel when his attorneys filed to failed to file adequate pretrial objections to the introduction of the mass overly prejudicial propensity evidence and routinely failed to lodge timely objections to some, although not all, of the damning bad act evidence. In sum, defendant's trial was little more than a reenactment of the one-sided docu-series surviving R. Kelly which several of the jurors had received before stepping into the courtroom. It is a wonder that the government did not simply, oh, oh Lord, it is a wonder that the government did not simply offer the docu-series into evidence. With this backdrop, Defendant was powerless to defend against the charged offenses for which there were viable, even winning defenses. Defendant was denied his constitutional guarantee of a fair trial where the jury heard excessive, minimally, minimally probative evidence of contemptible conduct that was introduced solely to inflame the passions of the jury and punish the defendant for decades of unchecked bad behavior. 
relevant acts. In the two months preceding the start of defendant's trial, his defense team was focused on fighting one another and preoccupied with litigating a curio hearing on account of one of his attorneys disabling conflict of interest. Not surprisingly, defendant's trial team wasted valuable time and resources focused on this side of circus rather than preparing a strategy for defending the case. At the defendant's request, this court granted an extension for the filing of motions in limine until July 23rd, 2021. On July 23rd, 2021, the government filed a whopping 55-page mo motion seeking to admit a heap of prior bad evidence. Defense counsel filed no motions in limine. Incredibly, defense counsel failed to preclude any uncharged bad act evidence that was produced as part of the government's 3,500 materials. On July 30th, 2021, defense counsel filed a written objection to the government's motion in limine regarding the introduction of prior bad act evidence largely on timeless grounds. The response contained a general objection to the evidence as untimely. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me hit that back again. Hold up. The response contained a general objection to the evidence as untimely with no meaningful relevancy, objections or Rule 40, 403 analysis. Inexplicably, defense counsel did not seek a continuance of the trial to investigate these alleged surprise witnesses, but merely asked the court to strike them. At a final pretrial hearing, defense counsel conceded that he did, in fact, know who the other bad act witnesses were and was familiar with their allegations. Defense counsel conceded that he was in possession of all 3,500 material and had received supplemental 3,500 materials from the government. August 6, 2021, the defense Council filed a two-page supplemental opposition to the government's motion to admit other bad act evidence. Throughout trial, defense counsel filed a handful of letters objecting to the introduction of certain bad act evidence. Those objections were largely overruled. The record does not seem to reflect objections to much of the uncharged bad act evidence offered by the government. So, so here's the argument. Defendant was denied a fair trial when his jury was swamped with a mass of minim minimally probative, cumulative, and unduly prejudicial other bad act evidence, some of which was admitted without objection in violation of defendant's sixth amended guarantee of effective assistance of counsel. With virtually no limitation, this court permitted the prosecution to inundate the jury with excessive bad act evidence, mostly under the theory that the evidence was relevant to the means and methods of the enterprise. The means and method justification for introduction of copious amounts of bad act evidence is gravely flawed because the government's theory of an enterprise is flawed. Where the enterprise consisted of nothing more than the purported sexual misbehavior of the defendant, unconnected to activities of a discrete enterprise, the means and methods relevancy justification is meaningless. As argued at length in defendant's Rule 29 motion, the government failed to prove that defendant was distinct from the so-called enterprise, no matter how much repellent evidence of sexual indiscretion or abusive behavior the government accumulated against the defendant. The fact remains that it was the defendant and the defendant alone who engaged in these affairs, wholly disconnected to the affairs by a distinct enterprise. By characterizing defendant's purported decades long history of abusive conduct toward women as an enterprise, the government not only avoided statutes of limitations, but was free to introduce any unkind or abusive act of sexual or non-sexual nature as evidence of the enterprise. Conveniently, 
avoiding the rule against the admission of propensity evidence and the limitations set out and fed our evidence, 404. I presume that's a rule. Notwithstanding, this court was still obligated to conduct a meaningful Rule 403 analysis, which it failed to do. Rule 403 authorizes the exclusion of relevant evidence when its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice, confusion of the issue, or misleading the jury, or by considerations of undue delay, waste of time, or needless presentation of cumulative evidence. The United States Supreme Court held in Old Chief that unfair prejudice as to defendant as to a defendant speaks to the capacity of some concedingly relevant evidence to lure the fact finder into declaring guilt on a ground different from proof specific to the offenses charged. O Chief versus United States. The committee notes to Rule 403 explain unfair prejudice within its context means an undue tendency to suggest decision on an important basis, commonly, though not necessarily, an emotional one. Advisory committee notes on FEDR evidence 403, as old chief observed, states, courts that follow the common law tradition almost unanimously have come to disallow resort by the prosecution of any kind of evidence of a defendant's evil character to establish probability of his guilt. Not that the law invests the defendant with a presumption of good character, but it simply closes the whole matter of character, disposition, and reputation on the prosecution on the prosecution's case in chief. The state may not show defendants prior trouble with the law, specific criminal acts, or ill name among his neighbors, even though such facts might logically be persuasive that he is by propensity a probable perpetrator of the crime. The inquiry is not rejected because character is irrelevant. On the contrary, it is said to weigh too much crime with the jury and to and to so over persuade them as to prejudge one with a bad general record and deny him a fair opportunity to defend against a particular charge. The overriding policy of excluding such evidence, despite its admitted probative value, is the practical experience that, it dis uh, that is disallowance tends to prevent confusion of issues, unfair surprise, and undue prejudice. Probative value is also informed by the availability of alternate means to present similar evidence. Specifically, the Supreme Court has advised that the Rule 403 probative value of an item of evidence may be calculated by comparing evidentiary alternatives. The district court is afforded wide discretion to exclude evidence that is, on balance, unduly prejudicial. So long as the district court has conscientiously based, balanced the proffered evidence probative value with the risk for prejudice, its conclusion will be disturbed only if it's arbitrary or irrational. Oh, Lord, get it, Bon Jean. <clears throat> as set out below, this court did not conscientiously balance the probative value of the certified proffered government evidence that carried an extraordinary risk of prejudice. In some instances, trial counsel failed to object to the introduction of such evidence, rendering counsel's performance objectively unreasonable. Excessive STD evidence. Ooh. The government charged the defendant with committing numerous racketeering acts in the states of California and New York by knowingly exposing Jane and Faith to herpes. This court repeatedly noted that under its interpretation of the statutes, the government was not required to show that defendant transmitted herpes to Jane and Faith. Mere exposure was sufficient. As set forth in Rule 29 motion, defendant quarrels with this court's interpretation of the statute. But assuming, our, uh, I can't I don't know this word. Our, I don't know this word. Presu presuming, I mean, but assuming, 
arguendo, I believe it is, the court is correct. There is little justification for allowing massive amounts of evidence that defendant purportedly spent decades transmitting herpes to numerous women. Through defendant's physician, the government pres presented evidence that defendant had herpes when he was sexually active with Jane and Faith, that he knew he had herpes during a relevant time period, and that he was treating his condition with a regimen of Valtrex. Both women testified that they had unprotected, unprotected sex with defendant and that defendant did not disclose that he suffered from herpes. This evidence went unrefuted. Accordingly, any additional evidence related to the defendant's herpes diagnosis and transmission of herpes to other women was unnecessary, cumulative, and unduly prejudicial, regardless of relevance. Notwithstanding, the prosecution admitted excessive evidence about defendant's failure to practice safe sex and elicited numerous allegations that defendant transmitted herpes to other women. Specifically, the prosecution presented testimony that defendant suffered from other sexually transmitted diseases prior to his sexual relationship with Jane and Faith, had infected Geronda with herpes, had infected Kate with herpes, had infected Anna with herpes. The prosecution offered copious amounts of documentary evidence regarding defendant and his partner's herpes treatment and elicited graphic details from multiple witnesses about the symptoms of herpes. The government's utter uttered the word herpes hundreds of times throughout this trial. The evidence was rank propensity evidence. For the reasons argued in Defendant's Rule 29, 29 motions and above, the government simply failed to show that the so-called enterprise existed so that the so that defendant could expose women to herpes. As such, the herpes evidence is not justified under the catch-all means and methods of the enterprise. It's just propensity evidence. Moreover, whatever probative value it had was significantly outweighed by its prejudicial effect. Although trial counsel voiced an objection to the admission of Kate's testimony, the record does not clearly indicate that trial counsel objected to the excessive amounts of herpes evidence from numerous other witnesses. This failure was objectively objectively unreasonable since there is no possible trial strategy for failing to limit this type of other bad act evidence, which was designed to breed contempt for the defendant. Furthermore, there can be no confidence in this verdict of guilt where it was based largely prejudicial bad act evidence, including excessive herpes evidence. Evidence concerning sexual relations with Aaliyah. The prosecution charged defendant with one racketeering act of bribery for the sole purpose of getting evidence before the jury about his marriage and relationship with Aaliyah. Other defense counsel's objection, or as you were over defense counsel's objection, this court permitted the prosecution to introduce testimony from Angela, Jane Doe number seven, that she allegedly observed sexual interactions between defendant and Aaliyah in 1991 on defendant's tour bus. This court erred by allowing this highly prejudicial testimony into evidence. Angela's testimony was not relevant under the means and methods theory since it purportedly occurred pre-enterprise. This court seemed to recognize this fact, but nonetheless concluded that Angela's testimony that she witnessed sexual interactions between defendant and Aaliyah provided the motive for defendant's racketeering act of bribery. Defendant respectfully disagrees on this point. The prosecution presented testimony about defendant's alleged motive for marrying Aaliyah through Demetrius Smith, who expressly stated that defendant told him that Aaliyah was in trouble and thought she was pregnant. Smith elaborated that defendant believed that he needed to marry Aaliyah to protect himself from going to jail. 
graphic testimony from a third party about seeing defendant and Aaliyah engaging in sexual relations added nothing more to the motive than defendant's own admissions and the fact that he married Aaliyah. Whatever probative value Angela's testimony had on this point was substantially outweighed by its prejudicial effect. As such, it was error to allow Angela to testify about her alleged obligations on the tour bus in 1991. Testimony from Addie, Alexis, Kate, Anna, Angela, Lewis, and Alex. This court provided the government to present a whopping seven additional witnesses to testify about graphic, uncharged bad act evidence concerning dozens of sexual encounters with the defendant. Apart from Angela's testimony, which concerned sexual conduct pre-enterprise, the prosecution defended the introduction of this evidence under the catch-all means and methods of the enterprise theory. As argued above, where the defendant and the defendant alone was the enterprise, the means and methods justification for the introduction of copious amounts of bad act evidence is simply a free pass at introducing unlimited bad act evidence related to the defendant's alleged sexual misdeeds and abusive conduct. This circular logic returns us to the overarching defect in this prosecution, namely that it was a that it was a prosecution of defendant's bad character and unpunished sexual misdeeds, it had nothing to do with punishing or preventing the conduct of an enterprise. Even if the evidence had some relevant purpose, the evidence was cumulative and unduly prejudicial. The jury was inundated with one jarring story after the next of unconventional graphic sex acts, including sexual conduct that many, perhaps most, would consider deviant. Example, group sex, elements of uh, bondage, uh, sadomasochism, I believe that's what that is, and corpophilia. When considering this mass of prior bad act evidence, Cumulatively, its probative value is diminished exponentially as compared to its prejudicial effect. There can be little doubt that defendant's jury was inclined to rectify past injustices by punishing defendant even if it harbored doubt against about his guilt on the charged offenses. The risk of prejudice and confusion was particularly acute where the trial developed into a live rendition of the surviving R. Kelly docuseries replete with viewings of sexually explicit videos. Trial counsel objected to the introduction of testimony from Addie in a letter dated August 26, 2021, filed under seal, but the record does not seem to reflect that defense counsel specifically objected on 401 or 403 grounds to all of the aforementioned prior bad act evidence with the exception of Angela, but only as to her observations about defendant's conduct with Aaliyah and not as to her own sexual experiences with defendant. Trial counsel's performance was objectively substandard where it failed to adequately object to the introduction of this damning evidence. Trial counsel offered no written response to the prosecution's motion to allow this evidence and made no meaningful arguments at the final pretrial conference on these matters. Since trial counsel claimed that he was surprised by the proposed other bad act witnesses, he was in no position to make cogent and comprehensive arguments objecting to this unduly prejudicial evidence. Even when given another opportunity to file more fulsome objections, counsel failed to do so. No trial, st no trial strategy justifies this objectively unreasonable performance. Inexplicably, trial counsel affirmatively introduced other prior bad act evidence. For example, trial counsel opened the door to testimony concerning defendant's prior criminal prosecution in Illinois State court 
related to sexual exploitation of a child. No sound trial strategy justified telling the jury that defendant had been previously prosecuted for crimes nearly identical to those charged in the instant case. Defendant was prejudiced by his attorney's failings where a reasonable probability exists that this court would have excluded much of the prosecution's proposed bad act evidence if it had been challenged competently. There can be no confidence in this verdict of guilt where the jury was overwhelmed with bad character evidence. Admission of graphic videos depict, depicting sex acts. Defendant was further denied a fair trial when this court permitted the introduction of graphic pornography and still photos involving group sex between the defendant, Alex, and Dominique, who did not even testify in these proceedings and graphic videos involving Anna, including a video depicting corpo corpophilia. Trial counsel objected to the introduction of these videos, albeit belatedly. Again, for the reasons set forth in counsel's letters to this court and for the reasons identified supra, this evidence was not relevant to any means and methods of any enterprise since there was no enterprise. Whatever probative value it had was substantially outweighed by its prejudicial effect. One cannot imagine a more prejudicial piece of evidence than those videos which added very little to the testimony the jurors heard. Conclusion. In light of the foregoing, defendants' convictions must be vacated and a new trial ordered. Data today, March 21st, 2022, New York, New York, respectfully submitted Jennifer Bonjean. Thank you, Mel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Listen, guys, before we go to the next one, um, we need to get the likes up. Seriously. We definitely need to get the likes up. Um, Mel, what do you think? OMG. OMG. Oh, my God. She picked everything. Mm. everything. You know what? And this is what she... Um, this is what she needed. I mean, this is why she um, asked for, you know, she was like, no, I, I don't want to reduce. Remember when she put the motion to um, allow the, the thick package of, of documents because there was so much she had to address so he mm -hmm. wouldn't forfeit anything on his um, appeal if necessary. Mm -hmm. This, 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 the contents of this motion show she did. She picked the bone clean. Oh, my God. Goodness, Jennifer! Mo oh my God, Sylvie! Yeah, she did. She did her thing, and she, her thing. she made. I mean, I didn't see any of this coming. I didn't see any of, the, of these points of argument coming. And I want to look up this. Uh, listen, this corporophilia. Because go look it up. Because I, 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 I have an idea what it is. Me too. Yeah, so I have an idea. It's just something nasty. But go ahead and. I have an idea. When they said Anna, I have an idea who it is. Okay, now who I'm going to guess before I hit this enter button, but I think it's like the the person playing as though they are a corpse. Yeah. Uh, let's look it up. Oh, look it up. Oh, abnormal interest and pleasure. Oh, girl, we're both wrong. Oh, feces. Abnormal interest and pleasure in feces. That's what I said, feces. I said I was right. Feces. I thought it was. I thought it was, you know, corpse. That's what. No, no, no. I knew when corpse. they say Anna. I knew it was feces. Mm. Well, <laughs> I knew Listen, it was feces when they said Anna. But you know what? You know what? Bonjean did. She broke it down when she said, "Hey, look, I'm trying to roll back up to it." She pulled broke it up. She said, "Hey, look, yeah, it's an it, it's it's inflammatory, and most people probably don't get down." The way hey goes. guys, wait, wait, guys! Before we stop, Mel, somebody please put Mel's channel down because let me tell you, this lady here be doing it. So, guys, put Safety. please put her um her link in so those could go and follow her. We have two hundred forty five people in here, and you guys, you guys, I mean, the stuff that Mel do on her channel, you please subscribe to her. 
Please do. Thanks, Sophie, for the shout She is the bomb. She is the bomb diggity. And let me tell you, y'all, she used to be one that was not for Robert. Facts. <laughs> Facts all day. And I, look I, at I, her. She is, I mean, she is stronger than a lot of us. It, it, I'm, I'm going to tell you, and it's a social justice issue. And if Jennifer Bonesheen didn't highlight that in this motion right here and right now. So she, so essentially. They, said they want your cash app, Mel. They want your uh, cash app. Uh, yeah, let me, okay. Let me look at that real quick. I don't know your cash app, sorry. I don't either. I think it's <laughs> MLM. I don't know. Let me look it up because I don't really know what it is, y'all. Uh, it's on my other phone, so. Because she deserve uh, it, y'all, because she's always here for me. Oh, I Thank appreciate y'all. You're so sweet. Um, I'll find it and and uh, drop it in there for you. But um, yeah, but Jennifer, this is really why it is a social justice issue just based really on look at how they uh, look at they. She broke it down. She tore through the fact that you guys charged them with an enterprise. But I'm here to show you why it wasn't an enterprise. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. And, you know, she she um, I like how she said she she took the words out of the people's mouth. Um, you guys may not have liked how our chaos was getting down, but that's not relevant. The fact of the matter is uh, some people do. And you guys are trying to try him based on that. I'm scrolling down this document now trying to find that specific reference. If I can, I don't know if you see it, Sylvie. Mm, I don't know. I don't she, see She, she kind of said like close to the very beginning, um, but she wasn't playing. She she broke this thing all the way down. Let me find this here. Uh, mm, mm, mm. She says here too, with the court's blessing, the government subjected the jury to a mass of repugnant conduct for the primary purpose of depicting defendant as a contemptible sexual deviant. Mm -hmm. she, 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 she let them know, I, this is what y'all did. You know it's what you did. And I, I'm not about to play with y'all. Y'all going to quit playing in my face. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When... Um, when this first the trial first concluded, we talked about the whole say the massacre and the the those type of um, BDM whatever those initials are. We talked about that, and just because you don't subscribe to it does not right. mean that it's illegal. Absolutely. These was adults doing this kind of Thank stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And they and they were adults doing this kind of stuff, and they were also young ladies who 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 got it in, and they came back. Mm -hmm. And climb the fence trying to get in there. Mm -hmm. So, you, like you said, it was definitely consenting individuals who participated in this. And, you know, and, and I just like to try to be real careful not to um, try to, uh, you know, minimize victims situation. But this is not a this is not your typical. Oh, they were a victim. This is this ain't that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This ain't that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These girls, you know, these girls, these girls. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, Mel. Nothing that was um, spoke about in court, no evidence was brought in in regards to them being held hostage or being forced labor mm -hmm. or anything like that. None of that stuff actually occurred. None of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it was a travesty of justice. Robert was not treated fairly. And he's coming home, guys. Regardless of what anybody thinks, he's coming home. If she doesn't, if the judge doesn't do it right now, I guarantee you this, the um, appellate court is going to overturn this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, you know, yeah, Jennifer is not to be played with when it comes to citing this case law and presenting her argument. You know, her argument is so sound and it's not her argument is sound and it's on point. She's it's not even a stretch. You understand what I mean? And she hit it right where right where it belongs in in, in regards to um, how this was not a uh, enterprise. She broke that down in the first motion requesting um, that he, you know, either be um, acquitted or uh, awarded a new trial 
and I'm just scrolling through here again. I'm trying to find, uh, cause this to me was what, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay guys. Here's Mel's cash app right here on my screen right now. Those who want to, um, bless her, be a blessing to her. I appreciate I thank you. you so much guys for being a blessing to her. Um, so this is the part where she broke this thing down that even a fifth grader could, could get with it. She said in some defendants trial was little more than a reenactment of the one-sided docuseries surviving R. Kelly. She said, it's a wonder that the government did not simply offer the docuseries into evidence. Girl, when I read that, I said, oh, M.G. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, and, and, and that is what's on the front. And see, to me, this is why these radio stations, girl, listen, this is why these radio stations, y'all need to unmute Kells. Um, this is why whoever's walking around feeling like, oh, now he deserves to be in jail. Hey, wait a minute. If you want a fair trial for yourself, if you want to preserve that right, then it applies liberally to all, Kells included. And that goes back to, girl, yes, I thought Kells was guilty coming out the gate. I did mute Kells. I quit, I, I quit playing his music when the first thing went down. I said, oh, man, are you serious? You know, but fine. And, and only, Sylvie, only up until the time you and I did our interview, girl, Hey, yeah, yeah. that's when I came, you know, hearing the truth about the transcripts, what really yeah. went down in court. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Lady D, check your email. Lady D, check your email. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I tell you. So this really is a social justice issue. And I'm telling you, if they, if that, if that AUSA up there had the had the nuts and bolts to allow this to go on as a presentation to uh, uh, um, try Kales. I know that she had to have done this to other uh, John Doe um, that nobody knows. Just yeah. your regular old John Doe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree. And I think that um, God just chose Robert right now to be that floodgate to open up the gate of the injustice that's going on in the system. Yeah, you know? and it's, you know, I, I would agree with that. And really, you know how, like, uh, man, I'll take it to you on scripture basis, but like with um, Esther, you know, mm -hmm. Esther was set. She was married to the king, living mm -hmm. life good. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then your boy, what's his name, Haman? Um, decided, mm -mm, I'm, I'm about to get rid of all these, this ethnicity, all these Jews. Mm -hmm. And um, Esther's husband, I mean, Esther's uncle said, hey, wait a minute, we need your help. And Esther really didn't want to do it at first. And her uncle had to get on and he told her, uh, how do you know that for such a time as this is the reason that you are in the position you're in? Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at all of this social injustice, going on like the, the 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 slow roll of repeal of our of our rights and like now there's a, a, a um an action going on in the state of tennessee where they're trying to roll back and prohibit uh, uh minority women and businesses from being from receiving preferential treatment when it comes to government contracts they want to roll that back so now once you take once you take that um and which is a federal protection. Well, once the state of Tennessee takes that federal protection uh, away from black and, and women owned businesses, um, that means the good old old boy gang is back in business and a yeah. black or woman run organization will never see a government contract until the end of time. They're doing it methodically. And yeah. so, you know, we need to open our eyes up that these people don't have no problem lying to you saying, oh, no, this is justice. This is justice. When, in fact, they're not producing justice. They're producing their own version of justice that benefits them. That's why this R. Kelly thing, in my opinion, is a social justice issue as well. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. get me preaching, girl. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, Mel. Exactly. Give me this is what break. it's all about, you know. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the other part to come in. Just That's go ahead. Funny. We can we can keep on talking. Let me keep on with my sermon. And uh, yeah, keep on talking. We're gonna hear a selection from the if, uh, selection A and B from the choir. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not trying to preach. You know, uh, I just you know we have to open our eyes to this stuff because things are going on, and and we're not the powers that be. So we only find out about it once they unroll, once they unveil their plan. Mm -hmm. This AUSA, you can tell she has no consci no level of conscientiousness. Because how do you how do you, how do you take pride in your work? You know, how do you sleep at night knowing good and dad gone well? What did she say? Let me find this in here, where she said about them charging for stuff that wasn't even in the wasn't even on the books. Let me see. I'm trying to find it, girl. Lord. Go back. Go back to it. <laughs> mm. And you know, and 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 when you look at the AUSA's behavior, I agree with Jennifer Bonjean. I'm surprised they didn't submit the surviving R. Kelly as evidence. And they might probably did ask, but they probably couldn't agree on a price. Uh for the producers, they was like, well, yeah, you do. I'm, I'm making this up, y'all. But, uh, <laughs> you, know, did the, you know, allegedly, did, did did they talk about it? And then girl said, no, nah, I want 200,000. And AUSA said, well, I'll give you 50. I mean, you know, I, you know, but Jennifer Bonjean makes a really good point. Y'all let all this in. Why didn't you just should just brought in our, uh, surviving R. Kelly as evidence? Ooh. Yes. Thank you, your girls, Marcel. Thank you. Guys, thank you, guys. Thank you. Hit the like button, y'all. Hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything to hit the like button. Oh, thank you, April. April, just thank you for the cash app, April. Appreciate you. And y'all, I only have one screen up. Uh, I only have my, this. I, I don't have, so if you're doing something for me, thank you. I'll say it to you now on live because I, I, <laughs> I got these transcripts in front of me and then this backstage action going on but thank you for everybody um let me see uh uh see a uh, smitty smitty subscribe thank you smitty smitty for being a subscriber i appreciate y'all for supporting me and supporting sylvie and sylvie i'm you just don't know i'm so happy i'm, I'm glad that my eyes have been open about just how easily these court officials don't have a problem mm -hmm. running a game on mm -hmm. us yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have a problem with it. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They don't. And the funny thing is, we've been trying to get people to have them to contact the radio station. And our people are not doing it. Like only a small group of people are doing it. They're not yeah, contacting yeah. the radio station. Well, I'm not more supporters. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest with you. See, see, and the radio is probably not really willing to admit this is why you can get radio on streaming apps now because people aren't turning on the radios in the crib no more because we have all of these other streaming apps so they you know so I, I like the fact that they're saying unmute r kelly you know and any posts that i've been doing like on on my instagram i've been tagging the chicago stations um, GCI, V103, uh, v and V103 Atlanta, um, and, you know, iHeartRadio. I've been hashtagging them in any posts that I make because, you know, um, they're, you know, because I want them to know, hey, we're not stupid. We know that you guys are, on, we can find you on a streaming platform. We can find you over here. These, these stations even have their own apps where you can just download the app and listen to them if they're your favorite station. So I feel like as long as we are just out here letting them know that, hey, we want you to unmute R. Kelly. And I know today I, um, you know, I, I did this, I did a, 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 a show um, on the question is with Jane Doe number five, who's supposed to be dropping music at the end of this month, um, are, are the radio stations, are they going to play her music? Oh, man, we need are to they, do an uproar. Are they going to play her music? And and so I put, and on there, uh, I tagged GCI, because I want to know Chicago, because y'all was loving some Kells up here in the shot. Y'all mm -hmm. was loving them until all this went down. 
So mm-hmm. y'all gonna play Tando's music now? Mm-hmm. After mm-hmm. after after we finally got the full four one one on how this thing happened. Yeah, and she's got a beautiful voice. I I, I will give her props on that. She has a voice. Now, I don't know about that, but well, uh, on, we agree to disagree. Yeah, that's fine. I'll <laughs> defer. my kind of music. <laughs> well, she. I mean, you know, what, like the snippets she's doing on on um, IG. You know, trying to be a rapper, she does need to sit down, in my opinion, because to me, she ain't got no bars. But as far as like singing, you know, like oh la la la, you know, she 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 can carry a tune. You know, she's not a Beyonce or anything of that nature, but um, she could carry a tune. She can carry a tune. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. They need to free Kells. They need to stop all this. And really, I just wish he would say just acquit the man and, and bump a retrial. Just acquit the man. Yeah, You can't get a fair trial after all of this. You just can't. No, you can't. Unless somebody's living under a rock. Mm. <laughs> There's no way. There's no possible way. Yeah. Ain't no free trials. I mean, ain't no fair trials. Not not in this case. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And and remember in her last motion, she talked about the jurors, how the jurors felt about Robert. Why would you allow the juror who has already prejudicial um, uh, thoughts and feelings about a defendant? Right. Absolutely. Well, and she and I'm scrolling to it now. She broke it down. Uh, let me find this because it's a very poignant statement about the. Um, where is it at the um, videotapes? Okay. Um, and e- and you know what? Let me, let me let me backtrack. Even the thing with Aaliyah, mm-hmm. they took that Aaliyah scenario and just morphed it in. So here's the truth. This is breaking news as far as my my world is concerned. Breaking news is, Kales married Aaliyah because he thought she was pregnant. Now, the only way she did, she could have gotten pregnant was he was having sex with her. Okay, okay. But but the bottom line is, that's why he married her. Uh, what does it say here? The prosecution charge defendant. Well, with- there was no there was no pregnancy. There was, it's just alleged what Demetrius said. This right. is not ex- actually, if you listen to all her interviews, mm-hmm. all her interviews, you got to go by the woman's interviews. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I'm going to go by. I'm not going by speculation of what anybody else says. It's the only the two of them knows exactly what happened, exactly. what was going on. So but, I would, huh? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And I agree with you 1000%. But what I'm saying is, is that until these transcripts came out, the, mm. the you know, they, they manufactured how we should look at the Kells and Elias situation. You know, mm-hmm. they, they really tried to run the narrative. Let me just read this part again. It says, evidence concerning sexual relations with Aaliyah. The prosecution charged defendant with one act, um, <clears throat> one racketeering act of bribery for the sole purpose of getting evidence before the jury about his marriage and relationship with Aaliyah. It says the court permitted the prosecution to introduce testimony from Angela. Shh that she allegedly observed sexual interactions between defendant and Aaliyah in 1991 on the defendant's tour bus. The court erred by allowing this highly prejudicial testimony into evidence. So for, for starters, what did you even have that in there for? Except for the fact- It's like a switch and bait, switch yeah, and bait. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Since Angela's testimony was not relevant under the means and methods theory since it purportedly occurred pre-enterprise. The court seemed to recognize this fact, but nonetheless concluded Angela's testimony that she witnessed sexual interactions between defendant and Aaliyah provided the motive for defendant's racketeering act of bribery. Defendant. Here's the reason why they did it, because they knew the case was not strong. And Mm. they're going by what they Mm. have portrayed over the years Mm. on, on television. So they what they did is use that as a trigger to people and say, oh, yes. if he did this, Absolutely. then the likelihood of him doing that is there. But they, he's not on trial for marrying Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. He was not on trial for having mm-hmm. relationship with, with Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. He was on trial for racketeering. Oh. And this is the thing that people can't understand, mm-hmm. that it was about racketeering. Had right. nothing to do with Aaliyah. Right. Yeah, they threw that in there. Leah's name in it because Mm -hmm. it's a trigger for people. Right, right. It's inflammatory. Yeah. It's inflammatory. 
says the prosecution presented testimony about defendant's alleged motive for marrying Aaliyah through a Demetrius Smith who expressly stated that defendant told him that Aaliyah was in trouble and thought she was pregnant. Smith elaborated that defendant believed that he needed to marry Aaliyah to protect himself from going to jail. So, so that tells us why, um, you know, based on the narrative that, you know, Kells was kicking it with Aaliyah and then for them to make it juicy, make it hot, make it relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. let me toss some of this in here. Let me throw some of this on top. You know, and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. They kept thinking about Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. Aaliyah was popular. Aaliyah was famous. <laughs> and they, they kept bringing that part of it. And the case had nothing to do with her. Mm. Nothing. Mm. And, and it seemed to me, too, that they wouldn't have even, well, they couldn't have done it. And this is why they let this, like they let Angela bring it in, because Aaliyah wasn't here to deny or, or affirm. No, exactly. Whatever the accusations I, were. Yeah. How can you have a case like that? Come on. I don't care what you feel about this, man. I don't care what you, because, you know, mm. all these people, oh, he used to come down to McDonald's. He was at the schoolhouse, yeah. blah, 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 blah. He was never charged for those things. Those things, if it did not happen, you did not charge him then. 20, 30 years later, you cannot come after him now. So all Thank of this you. nonsense yes. was made up stuff that they made, they went along, did it just to get him. They had an objective and then those objectives did not work. You know, yes. I mean, I'm not foolish. I'm not stupid. Right. You know, all these people have their own preconceived notion and ideas and hatred towards mm. this man. And they use their hatred to convict him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'd heard the rumors. trial. I, I had heard the rumor, Sylvie, that, um, you know, they, you know, back in the day, it was like, yeah, Kells used to be driving by the high school. And, you know, I got to thinking about it. I said, you know what? How do we know that that isn't a lie that somebody told just so they could be in a conversation about R. Kelly? Yeah, I seen him. He used to drive. He used to always be driving by the high schools trying to pick up young girls. Was that even a true statement? No, or was that just Mel, someone just Mel, making up stuff? Mel, Mel, yeah. I heard so much things about me. Come on. <laughs> so if they could tell lies about me, Come of on. course they could tell a lies about a man that's a superstar. Come on. And and okay. it just it just makes it so clear now that you know this is what was happening. Rumor control mm -hmm. got in got involved, and this thing just went just went haywire. It's just it's just ridiculous. It's just a lot. It's yeah, a lot. It is. It is. It is, man. I tell you, these people they and are I, they are a joke. I'm still trying to find um the the uh, phrase. And then they're going to use a McDonald's. McDonald's is memories for that man. His mama took him to, to mm. McDonald's. That's such a childhood memories. Come on, girl. If you, if you have ever been, if you had, if, if you was raised in the hood or raised in a low income uh, household. McDonald's you know is a pretty treat. Well, when somebody <laughs> took you to McDonald's, girl, please. McDonald's, White Castle. Come on now. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah, mm. like I don't eat McDonald's now, but McDonald's is a childhood memory. You girl, could remember on. everything happens. Every girl, them strawberry shakes McDonald's. from Mickey mm. D's used to be the mm. truth. I wish I would get a strawberry shake now. <laughs> girl, <laughs> please. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. Talking about going to McDonald's. Wait, since when McDonald's represent only for kids? Come on, stop well, it. And when he got, and when they released him, I think it was from the child support uh, hearing. Um, mm -hmm. That's exactly, that's where he went first. Straight to Mickey no, no, D's. No, it was, no, it was when he first got arrested the first okay. time. Okay. Yeah, it was one of them. But as soon as they let him out, of, you know, as soon as he came up out of the courthouse, that's exactly where he went. And the fans were there wanting to take pictures and, and things of that nature. So, you know, they take the good and turned it bad and tried mm -hmm. to turn it into, you know, so so you got throngs of people wanting to get with Kells in a public place like McDonald's. And then that, that just helps to fuel the rumor that, yeah, he was at Mickey D's trying to pick up girls. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a damn shame. Yeah. My goodness. And this, yeah. this prosecutor, the prosecutor that AUSA Gettys has a lot of nerve. Mm -hmm. mm. 
It's, it's racism too. It's racism. Very much so. You know, the other thing I want to talk about there, there's, there's another supposedly surviving R. Kelly coming out, right? Mm-hmm. Weinstein has been in jail. He's in jail right now. None of his movies have been canceled. Mm-hmm. They're still playing. He's still getting revenue from it. Mm-hmm. Why is it that this black man you got to take all his music down. Don't play it on the radio, but you can still watch Weinstein's movies. Mm. You know, and, and, you know, at first they were, because I know there was some news where they were trying to say, well, let Weinstein out because he's got uh, COVID and he's failing health and this and that. And we haven't heard anything else. And, you know, when they put your boy, what's my man's name? He was, used to work for Trump, uh, who bought all these carpets and uh things of that nature. What's that man's name? Um, But they had him, they let this guy, and if anybody knows, put it in the chat and Sylvie, if you see it. Um, But they, the man was in the the cell door was not even closed. He had a cell phone. He had laptops. He had computer access. Um, What is it? I can't think of his name. He's the first one that got indicted uh, under that. Epstein? Epstein? No, no, no. He was a political guy. Um, it was right before, uh, what's my man's name, who looks like a, a Batman villain. Um, oh, my goodness, I can't think of his name. I want to say it starts with an M. But he, the man, the man, the man misappropriated a lot of funds, allegedly. Um, <clears throat> and he bought, I mean, when they raided his, uh, one of his warehouses or something like that, he had thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands and thousands of dollars in carpets that you would get from Turkey and uh, uh, overseas. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? I'm going to try to find it. I, I, I'm going to try to find it so I can bring clear. But the point is, is that he was his jail cell wasn't even locked. He had come and go access like he was at the crib. Is it Roger Stone? Somebody just no, it was the guy right before Roger Stone. It was the man right before Roger Stone. I don't know who it is. Okay, it's it's no problem. I'm gonna look it up. I'm still just trying to find this clause in that uh, uh, my girl used in here. Bone Jean, boy, I'm telling you, that woman is not a lie. She is on. She's on it. And uh, Manafort. Thank you. Exactly. Him. Thank you. She, look, we should have had a prize for her. Come on, Laura. Laura got it. Laura it Holland Laura. got it. Yes, Manafort. The man had so he was hoarding things, and the the point is, is that he was in jail. But it, it's like it's the way it, the way I interpreted it was like how you see in those old gangster movies, you know, the old mob movies. He probably had a a, a stove, in a microwave, had every, all the you know furnishings of the crib, you know, so. So I said all that because they 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 were trying to get uh, what's my man's name Weinstein out. Oh, he's got COVID. Oh, he's hurt and this and that. And we haven't heard anything else about it. Is he is he at home? Is he still in jail? Or when he passes, will we find out? Well, you know, they let him out on a you know uh, uh, this or that. But you're not telling that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad Pill, check your email. Welcome to Mad Pill. Right? Welcome, Mad Pill. Everybody, um, go subscribe to him as well. He's doing some great things on his channel. And he has been a converter, too. Really? <laughs> Mad Pill's converted. <laughs> but he's out in Chicago as well. Oh, um, really, Mad Pill? Okay. Midwest area. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's your brother. Isn't that correct, Mad Pill? Um, but uh, I tell Who's you. Who's his brother? No, they do it. They do the show together. Oh, his channels, oh Mad, Mad Pill. Oh yeah, yeah. Mad Pill. I, I hit Mad Pill up on um on Facebook. Mad Pill. I, let, I let, me put my, let me put my link in here so we can bring them on in. Yeah, I sure did. Cause girl, I saw one of their episodes. They're uh, awesome. Those guys are awesome. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, They're good. Let me try they're to get good. this on my phone real quick. He is awesome. I tell you, he's they are awesome. I watched him the other night. I be in their bushes all the time. Mm-hmm. I have subscribed already to him and his brother. If that's if this is bad pill that um, I'm he said he said he replied to you. He responded. Sh- no. Bad pill, you did, but I've been on this Save Mason, Tennessee campaign and I haven't you know, I've got two 
things set up that I haven't been able to focus on. Yes, y'all laid it out on that one show. And and that's what was so crazy. Um, we going and, in. Yeah, going in. And matter of fact, I had watched them. And then I left the house and went to the gas station. And girl, when I was coming out of the gas station, somebody was bumping R. Kelly. And I came back and I and I uh, posted a comment um, on their on the video that I had been watching. I said, you know, I just came back from the from the gas station and folks are still bumping cows. Yeah. yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And, you know, the funny thing is the white station down here in Georgia plays him. But the black station is the one that's that boycotting mm, that mm, don't play him. Muted him. It's our own people. We're our own worst enemy. Yeah. But I feel like we need to put weight on. Listen, I'm not a fan of Tyrese. I love his singing, but he's he's got some character deficiencies as well, in my opinion. And but I will give Tyrese props because when Kells reached out to Tyrese after the passing of his mother, Tyrese yeah. got right on up there and said, Hey, look, shout out to Kells. You know, but every, all these other people like T. I and um, all of these other artists that Kells is colla- and, and, and other than Drake that collaborated with Kells, they are on hush mode like a mug. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and we should be calling them out. Yeah, definitely. We definitely. should be calling them out, especially now that the transcript. Okay, if you went on hush mode and you believe that Kells was guilty of everything because you didn't have the facts in front of you, okay. But the truth is out now. The the, yeah. the 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 real you know how the thing really went down is out now, so how come y'all are not supporting Kells or at least at a minimum asking for a fair trial? And Ti, mm-hmm. you don't get to come on nobody's social media platform trying to tell us about who we are and and black power and da 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 and and here the truth is and bro you won't say nothing, and you know he had gone through the same thing, so you need to come out there and help rob it out. Period. Come on, or at least advocate for the truth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mad Pill on deck. Yes, indeed. I would subscribe, Mad Pill, but I'm already subscribed. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Me Shoot. Too. I'm already subscribed. Mm, mm, mm. Well, let me see. I'm still trying to search through here and find this phrase. Oh, Lord, let me ask Guys, the, um, the government hasn't submitted theirs yet, so we're just waiting for the government to submit their um, motion. So that's why we, you know, we're bringing other topics along. Right. So when it comes in, pop in, we can just go ahead and flow to the next one. And I can bet you it is going to be lame and it that's is okay. going to be defensive. Mm-hmm. You know, like like her excuse, like AUSA uh, Getty's excuse uh, for the reason why uh, Bonjean should not have been allowed to have this motion. Well, we gave him time. We gave him time. They they are right. They be all right. But then Bonjean came clear. And she's like, well, hold up. They they had the uh, 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 the Metropolitan Detention Center on lockdown for two weeks straight. He couldn't mm-hmm. even get a Zoom meeting for two weeks straight. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and so they don't even want to, they're not even dealing in reality, at least based on the last response to the motion. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so I can just imagine what their argument or their response to this is going to be. Yeah, they got 53 more minutes to get it in. (laughs) What happens if they don't get it in? Well, they won't, the judge is going to have to make a decision based on what only what Bojin has in there. Mm -hmm. So mm. they got 53 more minutes. Thank you, Mad Pill. Thank you for the love. Mad Pill in the house. Yeah, Mad Pill and them, they weren't playing, boy. I'm telling you, I saw it. I said, get it. That's why I said, oh, I gotta, I gotta get with these folks. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And and I and I was really appreciative. I liked how they, you know, everybody has their style and their flow. You know what I'm saying? And everybody has different levels of emotions as it relates to R. Kelly and this whole situation. And what I'm really happy about is that people are being exactly who they are as it relates to, you know, why Kel should be free and why this really is an injustice that he's had to deal with. And, and, and like, I feel like we need the mad pills of the world to go. Yes, we do. 
all yes, the way down. And the, and, and the malicious conspiracies and the males and, and the, I mean, the different personalities because everybody's personality doesn't fit for everybody. Right. Not everybody's going to be praying like Sylvia. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Well, you know, they're going to they're gonna be on YouTube and see you scrolling and see you praying. And this is what I be doing sometime when I see you praying. I'm like, okay, in Jesus' name, shoot, Amen. I can go by and, 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 and stand in agreement with you. I may not click the link, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to tell you this too, Sylvie. You know, things worked out just fine because now my classes have started back again. You know, we were on spring break last week. And uh -huh. so we had uh, our live session tonight and we got out at eight o'clock. And so uh -huh. I was just sitting there just, you know, unwinding after that class. And then this text came over from you. I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. It came right on time. Because <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I might have had to leave class early. Okay. Look, I appreciate you and, and, um, all the others that come in and help me out for my purple couch, even though I call it couch potato. Yeah. I appreciate her. I appreciate every single one of them. Everybody has a special spot, come on. you know, yeah. everybody. Yeah. And it's enough for everyone. And yes. people, it, we don't need to be fighting one another. We yeah. need to have some sort of unity because right. everybody cannot be an arm. Everybody cannot be a come leg and, and a thigh, you know, you know some, everybody serves a purpose. Right. You know? Right. This is so true. And yeah, I mean, girl, listen, don't 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 get me uh, equating that to a spiritual or biblical reference because I can. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I mean, seriously, you know, it, well, I, I may as well since I put it out there. It's just like the, the uh, where the, um, the 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 workers in the vineyard when the what is the vineyard owner went to the main square. And he said, hey, I need some people to pull up and work in this vineyard. I'll pay you X number of dollars. And the people came. And as the day went on, he went back to the town square. And I'm prayer paraphrasing this, y'all, but it's in the Bible. Um, he went back to the to, to the main square and had and got some more folks. But he paid the, the folks that started the second shift. Uh, he paid them the same wages that the first shift got. And the first shift started complaining, talking about, well, why are you paying? Why are they getting the same thing? We've been here since the beginning. And da, da. so I said all that to say, it doesn't matter if you've been advocating for Kells for a hundred years, advocating for Kells for a hundred minutes. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're all singing from the same hymn book is what should matter if you're, you know, if the goal and the purpose is to free R. Kelly. That's it. That's it. You know, and, and because like Mad Pill and them, you know, they're really coming from a, a, a male's perspective. And then you said they in the shy. So you they yeah. coming from a male's perspective who reside in the shy. So their delivery is going to be way different, but yeah, still definitely. factual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can say it. I mean, they can say it. They're coming from the male's perspective about mm -hmm. how Kells was railroaded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there is no I in team. But what mm -hmm. they said was definitely an I in win. Come on, mm -hmm. y'all. We're trying mm -hmm. to win for Kells. It's about winning. Come it's on. About winning. It's about winning. That's all it is, you know. And look, I, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it to win it, you know. I am a very sore loser. I don't like to lose. I'm just like Jennifer. I don't like to lose. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to lose either. And, you know, and, and my concern is that they'll, you know, they, they, can't, they can't ignore the blatant um, injustice that they've done. And so if they turn around when all this is said and done, well, okay, we'll give you, okay, you guys were right. All of the, everything you're alleging is true. The, the AUSA did run a faulty case, et cetera, this and that. But we do have a, a, a traffic pick of Kells jaywalking. So we're going to go ahead and sentence him to, to life in prison. You know, I hope we don't get that kind of justice either. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. How many minutes they got now? 48 more minutes. How many more? 48 more minutes, right? Girl, I'm trying to, I'm scouring this document, trying to find that phrase. Gee, but wheeze, I can't find it. Hold on. What phrase? Oh, that Bonjean used. 
I'm trying to find it here, girl. Hold on. All right, guys, we, we're still here. Um, we'll get better results with bigger numbers of Kel supporters. Kel supporters, please stop the division and come together for a fight for Kels. Amen. We are Kelly. Unmute our Kelly. Exactly, um, Henny Hen. Amen, Henny Hen. You're absolutely right. Uh, we're patiently waiting. I think they're trying to drop it like on a low, low, since we're up waiting, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. well, they're, they're, probably, one minute. they're probably still trying to um, create. <laughs> they're trying to create stuff. I, I'm, I'm so tired of that AUSA. I, I, oh. oh, somebody asked me for a request. Hold on a second. Mel, I'm going to play um, past the Peter, I don't know if you know of him. He wrote a song um, uh, from Africa for Robert, and um, he's been a, he's been a great supporter for him. Yeah, I, I'm hip to that song. Absolutely. Are you are? Oh, okay. yeah. You turn me on to it. Yeah, but I'm hip to it. And it's, it's well, maybe jam. maybe I could turn it on. Turn it on to um, Mad Pill. Mad Pill. I'm gonna show you this one. Hold, hold on, Mad Pill. I'm gonna show you this one. Sylvester Galley, I can see you walking out through that open door. This is for Robert, Sylvester Galley. Make your way and get out to the place where you belong. Just like you, the tunnel and tea. For the wicked people, do 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 America Free Macaulay Son of the Most High I'm standing up for Robert Kelly African stand up for Kelly Jerusalem, stand up for Kelly. Free Macaulay. Standing up for Robert Kelly. African, stand up for Kelly. Jerusalem, stand up for Kelly. We are called Free Macaulay. For Robert. Sylvester Kelly, God has heard your cry and has come to change it all. It's nothing easy from your beginning. From your foundation, God is going to walk it all right. Yeah, you liars, we'll love to tell you. To the betrayers, they're do 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 so, 
da 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 eh. America. Put the way in a free Michael Son of the Most High. Standing up, standing up for a vertical African, African stand up for Kelly. Jerusalem, stand up for Kelly. Free Michael Standing up for Robert Kelly. African, stand up for Kelly. Jerusalem, stand up for Kelly. Free Michael Freedom for our calling. Oh, oh, oh. Freedom for our calling. Son of the Most High. America. Son of the Most High, standing up for a bright Cali. African, stand up for Cali. Jerusalem, stand up for Cali. Free my Cali. Son of the Most High, standing up for a bright Cali. Millions of lives. Robert Sylvester Kelly, congratulations. You're up. You're up, man. Thank you, Jesus. That's a jam, boy. That's bumping. Yeah, that's my jam, man. That's my jam. So that's I did find jam. what it was I was looking for, too, um, where Bonjean says that because defendant was forced to defend against dozens of uncharged claims of abusive and sexual misbehavior, much of it lawful, albeit unpalatable for some. And that is what this really boils down to. Exactly. Because Kells was getting it in how he get it in. <laughs> I mean, it's how he get it in. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, and now y'all want to take this man to court because he's selling out shows and the people want to see him and, he, and, his, and he's singing about how, he, come on now, come on. Y'all don't get to try to move that. 
Mel, I like what you say. He getting in how he get it in. He get it in, baby. That's how he doing it. And y'all mad at him for it. And, and, yeah. and oh, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Since defendant was stripped of the presumption of innocence and denied a fair trial. Yeah. Y'all, how many minutes we have now? 59 minus 22. How many minutes is that? Purple Couch, are you coming in? Let me put my link in for Purple. I love the way Purple Couch says banks. Mm -hmm. She says, when she gets up here, hopefully she'll say it. Because when she was doing, when we were doing uh, the Cardi B stuff, and she said, oh, Zell, your banks? Said, it's just the way she <laughs> it's the way she says it. We got 37 minutes, y'all. 37 minutes. I got to get it in at 11.59. Because 12 o'clock would be the next day. Unless she submits a request for an extension at 11.59. Oh. No, she can't get a request for an extension, remember? They said, um, look, look, she's still she's still the court. <laughs> well, I don't know who I am. <laughs> it don't matter. Say Azalea Banks, girl. Azalea Banks. All right, now. Banks. Banks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, Bonjean has proven... And I don't, she has proven her ability. Yes, Blue. They will be uh, based on the, the um, what Bon Jean's put in. Because remember, the judge is pretty strict with them with the getting things on time now these days. Good. Yeah, because this has drawn on way too long. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he's, uh, isn't sentencing supposed to happen if this, if this gets denied? Won't sentencing happen on, uh, was it May 1st or in May? Mm -hmm. mm. She's going to have to rule based on what um, Bonjean has submitted. It would be smart with them for them just not to put anything at all. Yeah. Because <laughs> then it'd be like, okay, we just let her have it. Let them have it. And I'm sure they don't want to retry the case again. Yeah, May 4th is the um, sentencing um, time. Yeah, I'm sure they don't want to retry the game. No, it's gonna cost the it's gonna cost the government so much money. Too much. Mm -hmm. And and they'd have to admit that they were that they were wrong. And even if they don't admit it, Bonjean has has showed everywhere where they were, uh, you know, they were they were inefficient and incompetent in in prosecuting this case. Yeah, disingenuous. Well, I missed it. Um, give a, a little kids and middle, because a couple of people came in later, and since they have not heard, and we're still waiting for the other, mm -hmm. the government side. Well, uh, basically, Bonjean, in, in, in rare form, uh, or continued form, really, uh, she just, she set this, uh, uh, the, the, this document had to have been on fire when it was submitted, because it, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Um, but she basically for, uh, just as a slight overview, she came in and said, listen, for starters, the reason why you guys ultimately, um, based on, uh, hey, Mel, 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 hold on a second. Sure. I have someone who wants to pray, um, right now for the, before it comes in. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Call her. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I just think that it's time for prayer. So we all need to take a moment. And reverence God on it to pull down these strongholds. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Heavenly Father God, we just want to thank you, God, for this day, this day that you have made, Father God. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, God. God, we at a place where there's a moment of decision, God. God, we need you to move like a whirlwind, God in this place, wherever the government is, wherever the person is or the people are, to make a decision, God, we need you to be present right now, God. We need you to move in that place like a whirlwind, sweeping and cleansing everything that's unright, that's holding Mr. Robert Kelly right now, God. God, we ask that you break every chain, every stronghold has to come down right now. Every door, every gate, every cell has 
to be open right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus against every evil force and every evil spirit that has been containing him and holding him, God. God, break these chains right now in the name of Jesus, God. And let this young man walk free, God. God, we know you able, God. We know you able. You said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You said any tongue that shall rise up against us, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and his righteousness is of me, God. God, so we ask that you go in there and move right now. Move right now. Move right now. You said the heart of the king is in your hand, God. So move right now. God, they have no power over you. Show them who has the power, God. You have the power, God. So turn this thing around. Set the young free right now in the name of Jesus, God. And we're going to be so mindful, Father, to give you the honor, God, and give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you. In Jesus' Amen. name. All righty. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Confound, Lord. Confuse them. Confuse them in their motion, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The enemy is already defeated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Victory in your Yes, Lord. Victory. Victory, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for the victory you have given unto Robert this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Father God. Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Bless your holy and righteous name. Lord, yes, Father. And it's yes. done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father God. Thank you. 29 more minutes, guys. 29. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless your holy name, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Father God. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Father, we trust you. We honor you, Lord. Lord, we praise in you right now, Father. We praise you in the midst of it all. We praise you, Father God. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 28 more minutes, guys. 28 more minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you know what, Sylvia? The scripture has come. Um, I've been thinking about this scripture for the past couple, three weeks. And mm -hmm. um, this is so appropriate for, for Kells and the situation that he's in. And really why it's important for all of us just to remain faithful that, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord is in control and he's going to work this thing out. Um, it's Acts uh, chapter 16 and it's verses 25 through 34. And starting with 25, it says, and at midnight, Paul mm. and Silas prayed. Midnight. 
uh-huh, and sang <laughs> praises unto God. And the prisoners, the prisoners heard them. And uh-huh. suddenly, verse uh-huh. 12, and suddenly uh-huh. there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, uh-huh. and immediately all the doors were opened, and uh-huh. everyone's bands we're loosed. Lord, we, are, we, we, we stand just waiting for mm. you to, to manifest that yes. 2022 Amen. in our Kelly situation. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask and pray that, Lord God. Yes, God. Mm. Yes, Lord. He's able. Yes. Amen. Read that Lord again, God. Mel. Mel, read that again. It's Acts mm-hmm. 16, 25 and 26. And at midnight, mm-hmm. Paul and Silas prayed. Praise. And sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And yeah. suddenly oh. there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Oh. And immediately all oh. the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Oh, uh, glory to God. And you know Victory. what? And you know what? And and y'all recall too how uh they opened how, how the, the spirit led Peter up out of his confinement mm-hmm. and took him straight to the home. Whose house was that that they took him to? And they was like, wait a minute, it's Peter at the door. And wait, wait a minute, Peter was on lockdown. How was mm-hmm. Peter at the door? Mm-hmm. I got to find that scripture. Yeah. But so, the, so God has already demonstrated what he's able to do. Yes. What he's mm-hmm. able Above to do. all that we can ask or think. Come on. Mm-hmm. So he's able. Yes, Lord. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's able. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. He's Thank able. Jesus. Yes, yes Lord. he is. He's able. Yes, he yes, is. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Victory. Victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Vivian says the upper room, the book of Acts. Yeah, absolutely. The book of Acts. And, uh, Said that 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 the spirit led Peter all the way out of the, mm. all the gates, mm-hmm. led him all the way through the gates, and he showed up at the for y'all. Y'all know I got to look it up now, right? Yeah, I know, I know, I, I know. know. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'm looking for it too. <laughs> I think it's Acts 12, 5 through, yeah, Peter freed from prison. Acts oh. 12. All right, y'all. The government just responded. We, oh, okay. We, we, okay. We. Hold on, I'm going to send it to you guys right now. Okay, while you're doing that. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by oh. the church. Hiya. And when Herod was oh. about to bring him out, that night, Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards uh-huh. before the door were keeping the prison. Now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, uh-huh. Arise quickly. And his uh-huh. chains fell off. Uh-huh. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Mm. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought mm. he was it seeing was a vision. vision. Peter thought mm-hmm. he was seeing a vision. <laughs> and when they were past the first and second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own mm. accord. Mm-hmm. And they went out and went down one street and immediately the angel departed from him. Mm. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain, for certain. that the Lord has sent his angel mm. and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Mm. Mm. And, he says, and, so when he, and so when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother mm. of John, whose surname was Mark. And when they were gathered together praying, as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When yeah, she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood yes. outside the gate. Mm, mm, but they mm. said to her, you are beside yourself. She kept insisting that it was so. So mm-hmm. they said, it is his angel. Said, com- said Peter continued knocking. When they opened the door, they saw him, and they were astonished. God is good, y'all. Mm, mm, I mm. told you. No, yeah, check your email. email. Check your email. Okay, okay, yeah. Let me stop preaching. I'm sorry. Let me. Um, I'm on my phone, so I I can't do too much. That's how I accidentally took myself off. Okay. 
<laughs> Let me see, I'm, I'm going to my email right now, Selby. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Lord. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, this 45, oh, they got 45 pages worth of nothingness, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh. So the government ready, guys? The defense ready? for a new trial pursuant to Rule 33, Rules of Criminal Procedure. Mm. Hey, um, Y'all ready? Go ahead. Is it my phone or somebody sound like a robot? It's your know. phone. We can hear each other. Yeah, you sound clear. You want to start it off purple, purple catch? She, I don't think she has her, um, her what's her name? Let, let me, um. Yeah, they, they, and they, they modeled, oh, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, They're very much giving uh, Tasha Kay's attorneys. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's giving Olga. Hey, Rhoda, if you could come in, here's the link. I check your email, Rhoda. And um, Tanya. So going to give you some help. Help is on the way. All right, let me, um, I'm trying to put my, I'm putting my, um, my what's the name on mine. It's going to be very interesting to see how the judge rules on this. Oh yeah, it's going to be very interesting. interesting. All right, y'all, y'all ready? Hold on. We ask her for a favor. Rhoda's coming in. Do you see how they put all these cases? They put a whole bunch of cases in mm -hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> but but in the very first beginning of this, they've already made it clear why it, exactly the ineffective counsel argument that Bonjean has made. Mm -hmm. But they owe herself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm, mm, mm. Trying to put my um. All right, guys, we got the government's response. We're about to read it to you guys. There she is. Hey, people. Hey. Hey, Rhoda. Hey. You want uh, Rhoda to start for you, Mel? It doesn't matter. I mean, I can start. Uh, All right, then you start then. Or, then Rhoda, or, or Rhoda. Whatever you want to do, Rhoda. Go ahead, and then, then when you get tired, just let me know. Okay. I'll, I'll read the introduction, and maybe you can just jump in where it goes to the uh, um, deficient performance. Um, okay. All right. So introduction. The defendant seeks a new trial pursuant to Rule 33 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure as a result of his conviction on September 27, 2021, of nine counts charging racketeering and multiple violations of the Mann Act. In his motion and supporting memorandum, the defendant argues that he was denied effective assistance of counsel because of his trial attorneys failed to conduct a meaningful voir dire of potential jurors and challenge unqualified jurors and was denied conflict-free counsel under the Sixth Amendment because one of his attorneys simultaneously represented the victim who testified at trial under the pseudonym Jane. For the reasons set forth below, the court should deny the motion in its entirety. 
Rule 33 provides that the court may grant a defendant's motion for a new trial if the interest of justice so requires. However, motions for a new trial are disfavored in this circuit and the standard for granting such motion is strict. Accordingly, courts must exercise their Rule 33 authority sparingly and only in the most extraordinary circumstances. The defendant was not denied effective assistance of counsel during voir dire. The defendant asserts that he is entitled to a new trial where his trial team conducted no meaningful voir dire and acquiesced to the seating of jurors who were unqualified to serve on this jury. This claim lacks all merit relevant background. In order to facilitate jury selection in this case, approximately 575 prospective jurors completed a comprehensive 28-page questionnaire comprised of 108 questions. The court then invited the parties to submit challenges to any prospective jurors based on their, question, their questionnaire responses. The parties thereafter submitted a joint list of 251 prospective jurors that they agreed should be stricken for cause. In addition to the agreed upon four cause challenges, the government sub submitted a list of 34 additional prospective jurors it challenged for cause for various reasons. And the defendant submitted a list of 145 additional prospective jurors he challenged for cause for various reasons. The court then directed the remaining prospective jurors who were not challenged for cause by either party based on their questionnaire to appear for an in-person voir dire. Over the course of two days, the court conducted in-person voir dire in two phases. During the first phase, the court addressed the prospective jurors in a group setting, advising them of multiple principles of law, including the burden of proof, the, the, the defendant's presumption of innocence, and the need to follow the court's instructions. During the second phase, the court spoke with the remaining prospective jurors individually outside the presence of the other prospective jurors, making further inquiries of each prospective juror, including posing additional follow-up questions submitted by the parties in writing and orally during voir dire. During in-person voir dire, the court excluded approximately 34 prospective jurors for cause for, re for various reasons, including scheduling conflicts, English comprehension issues, financial hardship, and concerns about the prospective jurors' impartiality. After voir dire was complete, the parties exercised their preemptory challenges from the pool of qualified prospective jurors, and the court subsequently seated and swore 12 jurors and five alternate jurors to hear the case. Following the close, the close of evidence and the court's final instructions, the 12 jurors deliberated, ultimately finding the defendant guilty on all nine counts in the third superseding indictment. With respect to count one, which charged the defendant with racketeering for jury, found that all racketeering acts, except racketeering acts three and four, had been proven by the government. None of the alternate jurors was called on to deliberate. The legal standard. A defendant who attacks his conviction based on claims of ineffective assistance of counsel must show the show that counsel's performance fell below an objective standard of reasonableness under prevailing professional norms and affirmatively prove prejudice. Example, demonstrate that there is a reasonably probability, a reasonable probability that, but for counsel's unprofessional errors, the result of the proceedings would have been different. Under uh, the Strickland standard, a petitioner must establish both, both that counsel made errors so serious that defendant was deprived of, of reasonably competent representation and that counsel's deficient performance prejudiced the defense. Both prongs must be satisfied to succeed in, on an ineffective assistance claim, and the court need not address both components if a defendant fails to establish either one as a failure on either showing is dispositive. And it's on you, Rhoda, deficient performance. All righty. With respect to the first prong, a defendant must identify the acts or omissions of counsel that are alleged not to have been the result of reasonable professional judgment. The court must then determine whether, in light of all the circumstances, the identified acts or omissions were outside the wide range of professionally competent assistance. 
judicial scrutiny of council's performance must be highly deferential and strategic choices made after thorough investigation of law and facts relevant to plausible options are virtually unchallengeable. Actions or admissions by counsel that might be considered sound trial strategy do not constitute ineffective assistance. Internal quotations admitted. Moreover, evaluating counsel's performance must not serve as an opportunity to act as a Monday morning quarterback. A court must not use perfect hindsight to criticize unsuccessful strategies. Finding that the performance inquiry examines the reasonableness of counsel's actions under all circumstances, keeping in mind that a fair assessment of attorney performance requires that every effort be made to eliminate the distorting effects of hindsight. Rather, a court must indulge a strong presumption that counsel's conduct falls within the wide range of reasonable professional assistance. That is, the defendant must overcome the presumption that, under the circumstances, that challenged action might be considered sound strategy. The Second Circuit has defined a strategic decision as a conscious reasonably informed decision made by an attorney with an eye to benefiting his client. Internal citation and quotation marks omitted. When examining an ineffective assistant claim in the context of jury selection, consistent with Strickland, an attorney's action in conducting Vaudeur are also afforded deference. Holding that trial counsel decision not to seek an alternate juror is paradigmatically strategic, whatever that is. Indeed, courts are low to second guess the decisions of counsel during jury selection. Strategies as to the exercise of preemptories are matters of counsel's inut what is it? intuition and do not rise to the level of constitutional violation. It is not the role of the court to second guess counsel's reasonable st strategic decisions at jury selection, especially considering that counsel is strongly presumed to have rendered adequate assistance and made all significant decisions in the exercise of reasonable professional judgment. An attorney's actions during Verdure are considered to be a matter of trial strategy and cannot form the basis for an ineffective assistant claim unless counsel's tactical decisions are so ill-chosen that they permeate the entire trial with obvious unfairness. Additionally, if a defendant fails to demonstrate that he requested that his attorney exercise a preemptory challenge for particular juries, the petitioner is deemed to have equicized to the attorney's decisions not to do so. Petitioner has failed to demonstrate he requested trial counsel exercise any challenges as to the jurors and as such, petitioner is deemed to have equicized in trial counsel's decision not to do so. Holding that defendant's acquiescence of trial counsel's strategic decision amounted to forfeiture of defendant's right to assert constitution, constitutional infirmities. Prejudice. With respect to the second prong in error by counsel, even if professionally unreasonable, does not warrant setting aside the judgment of a criminal proceeding if the error had no effect on the judgment, quoting Strickland. Thus, to establish prejudice under Strickland, the defendant must show that there is a reasonable probability that, but for counsel's unprofessional errors, the result of the proceeding would have been different. A reasonable probability is a prob probability sufficient to undermine confidence in the outcome. 
Strickland. A court must review the prejudicial effect of counsel errors in the aggregate. Moreover, unlike the determination of trial counsel's performance under the first prong of Strickland, the determination of prejudice may be made with the benefit of hindsight. To establish prejudice stemming from trial counsel's failure to challenge a prospective juror for cause during Vordeur, a defendant must establish actual bias. However, to maintain a claim of ineffective assistance of counsel based on the failure to object to a biased juror, the petitioner must show that the juror was actually biased against him. Based on the lack of actual or presumed bias of the juror, jurors, the petitioner has not demonstrated that he was prejudiced by his counsel's failure to strike these jurors and has therefore failed to establish ineffective assistance of counsel. Actual bias is bias in fact, the existence of a state of mind that leads to an interference that that person will not act with entire impartiality. Actual bi bias can be found where prospective jurors admits partiality or where the same can be inferred from his or her answers to Verdur question. Significantly, even where a juror expressly doubts his or her impartiality on Verdur, a finding of actual base bias is not automatically mandated. Holding that ambiguous and contradictory testimony of three jurors was insufficient to overcome presumption of correctness owed to trials court's findings that the jurors would be impartial. The test for determining jurors' bias is well established. The hold that the mere existence of any preconceived notion as to the guilt or innocence of an accused without more is sufficient to reboot, to rebut the presumption of a prospective juror's impartiality would be to establish an impossible standard. It is sufficient if the juror can lay aside his impression or opinion and render a verdict based on the evidence presented in court. Even where a juror previously expressed some reservations about his ability to be fair and impartial, if the juror later expresses during Verdura that he will try to decide the case based on the evidence presented, that assurance is generally sufficient. Therefore, to prevail on the claim that defense counsel was ineffective in failing to remove or challenge a juror during Verdura, a defendant must show that the juror was actually biased against him. At 20, without a finding that the juror was actually biased against petitioner, prejudice under Strickland is not presumed. Analysis. The defendant's ineffective assistant claims are wholly without merit. He cannot establish either prong under Strickland and his motion should be denied. The defendant first makes generalized assertions that trial counsel failed to conduct any meaningful murder of prospective jurors to ensure they were free of bias or prejudice. And two, unfounded and vague claims that trial counsel should have, for example, probed more deeply, inquired further, or completely questioned certain jurors. These claims are wholly belied by the record, which shows that trial counsel actively participated throughout the border process, submitting additional questions and asserting challenges for cause, both in writing and orally, in some cases successfully, as to various prospective jurors, including those prospective jurors whose impartiality may have been in question. In addition to the defendant's written for cause challenges with respect to the approximately 50 prospective jurors 
initially qualified after the first two days of in-person murder. The, the, the defendant requested that the court make further inquiries of approximately 19 prospective jurors, including additional questions related to prospective jurors, opinions on the Me Too movement and related topics, as well as their knowledge of the defendant and the nature of the charges. On various occasions, after hearing certain prospective jurors, responses to the follow-up questions, trial counsel did not challenge them. However, with respect to certain other prospective jurors, for example, prospective juror numbers 120 and 182, defensive counsel challenged and the court ultimately excused the prospective jurors for cause based on their responses to inquiries related to the Me Too movement. Trial counsel's inquiries on these topics clearly reflect that they considered the very issues now raised by the defendant when making for cause and preemptory challenges and made strategic, strategic decisions in certain instances not to challenge a particular prospective juror based on their responses to inquiries from the court and the parties. Reasoning that the fact that trial counsel's decision not to challenge a juror for cause was, strate was strategic may be evidenced by trial counsel use of for cause challenges on other prospective jurors. Finding that counsel's active participation in Verdure indicates that any decision to challenge or not to challenge jurors were made as part of a reasonable trial strategy rather than as a result of counsel's failure to provide effective assistance. Rejecting ineffective assistance of counsel claim regarding Verdure because the record reflected that defense counsel was actively engaged in the Verdure process and an attorney's determination to accept or strike a prospective juror was a strategic or tactical decision, internal citation admitted. Finding that counsel's decision to preemptorily challenge eight jurors lent support to conclusion that decision not to challenge allegedly biased jurors was part of trial strategy. Counsel exercised two preemptory challenges for other prospective jurors during Verdure. This suggests that counsel deliberately chose not to challenge another juror as part of trial strategy that might be considered sound. Nor has the defendant shown that he suffered any prejudice. He provides no tangible evidence of actual bias, relying only on speculation based on the challenged jurors' responses during Verdure as purported evidence of bias. Finding jurors were not actually biased against petitioner and therefore he was not prejudiced by trial counsel's failure to challenge them, where petitioner offered no evidence beyond the Vodor testimony of three individuals as to how the jurors were biased. Other than speculations regarding these jurors' ability to be impartial, given that each of the jurors at, each, at issue asserted their impartiality and that they could fairly decide the case. Indeed, the very fact that the defendant asserts that trial counsel should have uncovered some additional imagined information, but produces no actual information supporting the claim bias, emphasizes the speculative nature of these claims. In addition, the defendant's claim regarding trials counsel's failure to challenge prospective jurors who, one, has some knowledge of the defendant and or the allegations against him, including through affirmative responses 
to questions 31, indicating they had watched or heard interviews of Robert Kelly, TV shows featuring him or specials or documentaries about him, or two, knew of the Me Too movement, also lacked merit. As the Supreme Court has made clear, qualified jurors need not be totally ignorant of the facts and issues involved in a case. Every case of public interest is almost as a matter of necessity brought to the attention of all the intelligent people in the vicinity. And scarcely anyone can be found among those best fitted for jurors who has not read or heard of it and who has not some impression or some opinion in, re in respect to its merit. Most cases, pretrial publicity, even pervasive adverse publicity does not inevitably lead to an unfair trial. Rejecting an effective assistant claim, finding that defense counsel's decision not to challenge a juror was within the realm of sound trial strategy and that defendant could not establish actual bias where a police officer juror advised he could have had personal knowledge of the facts of the case in his employment, but did not recall any such knowledge and could remain impartial. Further, the defendant's unsupported assertion that the jurors' own subjective assurances that they could be fair was not sufficient to ensure that they did not harbor beliefs or preconceived ideas about defendant's guilt flies in the face of both the record and binding legal precedent that it is sufficient if the juror can lay aside his impression or opinion and render a verdict based on the evidence presented in court. As set forth in further detail below, the defendant has abjectly failed to, to, fail to prove that trial counsel did not act strategically in deciding not to challenge certain jurors for cause or use preemptory strikes to prevent their selection. He also fails to show that any of these, these jurors bore actual bias against the defendant. He therefore cannot show deficient performance or prejudice. Juror number three, formerly prospective juror number 25. The defendant asserts that trial counsel was ineffective in failing to challenge juror number three, given his responses that he had seen a documentary about the defendant and his legal troubles and heard that he has been sleeping with underage girls. As noted above, the mere fact that a juror has knowledge regarding the defendant or aspect of the charges does not automatically create a presumption of bias, particularly where, as here, the juror has indicated that he can set aside his prior knowledge and decide the case based solely on the evidence presented at trial. Indeed, the defendant completely ignores, as he does with each juror's affirmation of impartiality, juror number three unequivocal statements, both in response to the questionnaire and doing in-person murder, which reflect a total lack of bias and a clear ability to be impartial. For example, in response to question 31, juror number three advised that he has seen a documentary about the defendant, but added, I don't know the full story, so I have no feelings about it. I remain impartial. Question 31 emphasis added. Moreover, in response to question 32, which asked whether he had an impression of the defendant based on what he had seen or heard, juror number three advised that his impression was neutral, adding that the media tends to demonize people. I deal with facts. Question 32 
Juror number three also advised that he had not overheard discussion about the case, nor had he discussed the case with anyone or online. Juror number three further responded that neither defendant's celebrity nor anything about the nature of the case would interfere with his ability to decide the case fairly and impartially in accordance with the court's instructions. With respect to questions regarding the so-called Me Too movement, juror number three indicated that he was aware that the movement seeks justice for rape victims 25 to 30 years after the fact, and also stated that he had not participated in the Me Too movement. Juror number three also indicated he had no reason to believe he could not apply the law that the defendant is innocent until proven guilty and the government bears the burden of proof. During in-person voir dire, juror number three further affirmed his ability to be fair and impartial. When asked whether there was any reason he could not follow the court's instructions regarding the burden of proof and the fact that the defendant was innocent until proven guilty, juror number three responded, no reason at all. When asked by the court whether there was any reason why he would not be able to follow the court's instructions on the law, juror number three responded, no, I'm a stickler for the law on my job. I'm the, rec I'm the rule guy. Moreover, juror number three answered that there's no reason at all why he could not follow the course instructions not to research the facts, law or people involved in the case. And when asked by the court, is there any reason at all why you wouldn't be able to give both sides a fair trial, juror number three again unequivocally answered no. In these circumstances, the defendant cannot show deficient performance in counsel's decision not to challenge juror number three and also fails to prove any actual base bias on jurors number three's part that would result in prejudice, failing both Strickland prongs. Indeed, it was clearly sound strategy on the part of trial counsel to not exercise a preemptory challenge. Juror number three explained in his questionnaire that he had been arrested on two occasions, which resulted in charges being dismissed. And during the colloquy, colloquy with the court emphatically impressed that he had previously had certain negative experiences with law enforcement and that while he was not biased against law enforcement, he was biased against people in law enforcement that do these things. Thus, trial counsel likely made the strategic decision to keep juror number three because they believe the jurors past negative experiences with law enforcement, including being falsely arrested, arrested twice coupled with his belief that the media demonizes people, question 32, will make him more critical of the government's case. Trial counsel may also have reasonably believed that the government might use a preemptive, preemptory strike on jurors number three, given the government's follow-up question, which trial counsel may have interpreted as concern regarding juror number three on the part of the government. Rejecting claim of ineffective assistance of counsel where defense counsel did not object during the process because among other possibilities, counsel among other reasons failed to object so as to force the prosecution to expend an additional preemptory challenge to strike the juror. Juror number four formerly prospective juror number 52. The defendant next claimed deficient performance due to trial counsel's failure to challenge juror number four based on the juror's questionnaire that the juror finds transmission of STDs in a non-consensual act to be particularly repulsive. Had a close friend who was a victim 
of sexual assault and listed the person he least admired as Jeffrey Epstein. Again, the defendant fails to carry his burden to establish either strictly problem. Juror number four's questionnaire and Vordera responses in no way amount to actual bias against the defendant. A juror is not required to have entirely neutral feelings about the particular types of crimes charged. Denying post-conviction relief and finding trials counsel's decision not to challenge prospective juror in narcotics trial who expressed views about dangers of drug use given family history of drug abuse, drug abuse was not efficient performance where juror affirmed ability to be fair and impartial after court advised juror that nobody is asking you to walk in here totally blank. You will bring in your life experiences and that the relevant question was only whether juror could follow the law as I give it to you, then we be fair and impartial. Rather, the central issues, the central issue is whether juror can lay aside any preconceived notions. Here, juror number four indicated that he could. Nor was bias established on the ground that juror number four knew an individual who was a victim of sexual assault, notwithstanding that the charges against the defendant involved sexual assault. Finding that bias could not be inferred where juror advised the court that among other things, his wife had been abused before they were married. In case involving prosecution of defendant for forced labor of two young girls. Importantly, in response to question number 37, which asked whether there was anything about the nature of the charges in and of themselves that would print the, prevent the juror from deciding the case fairly and impartially in accordance with the court's instructions. Juror number four responded, no. Question 37. Likewise, in response to question number 65, which asked if there was any reason why juror number four could not apply the law that the government bears the burden of proving the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt on each charge, juror number four responded, no. Question 65. See also question 94. In fact, as was evident from juror number four's questionnaire and in person's verdict, juror number four had very little knowledge of who the defendant was, confusing the defendant's alias R. Kelly <clears throat> with the famous cartoonist from decades earlier. Even upon clarification that the defendant was not the cartoonist, Juror number four had very little knowledge of the defendant and had seen some news article that did not appear to have made any impression on him. Yeah, right. When asked whether there was anything that juror number four had read that would affect his ability to be fair and impartial in the case, he responded, not that I know of. Moreover, <clears throat> when the court spoke of the duty of jurors to decide the case based on the evidence at trial, juror number four added that the case was to be decided by the evidence, testimony, and your instructions on the law, clearly demonstrating his understanding of his duty as a juror. When the court advised juror number four that the government bore the burden of proving the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, Juror number four responded, right, and stated that he would have no problem following the court's instruction that the defendant is innocent until proven guilty. Therefore, any potential concerns that may have arisen from juror number four's questionnaire responses were alleviated by jurors number four's clear responses in the questionnaire and during Vordaro that he could remain fair and impartial and decide the case according to the court's instruction. In these circumstances, the defendants cannot show either deficient performance or actual bias 
and his claim should be rejected. Let me jump in here for juror number five. Okay, okay. All right, juror number five, formerly prospective juror 87, the defendant claims that trial counsel should have challenged juror number five because she had some knowledge of the defendant and had a somewhat negative impression of him. In response to why juror number five had this impression, juror number five wrote that there was an allegation that related he was sleeping with underage girls, minors. Notably, juror number five specifically used the word allegation to describe whatever knowledge she may have had about the case. Despite being aware of this allegation, which is no more than uh, was included in the summary of the case provided as part of the juror questionnaire, juror number five advised that she had not overheard any discussion about the case, discussed the case with anyone, or posted any opinions online. Juror number five further responded that neither the defendant, celebrity, nor anything about the nature of the case would interfere with her ability to decide the case fairly and impartially in accordance with the court's instruction. During the in-person colloquy, colloquy, the court asked juror number five whether, despite having some familiarity with the case, juror number five was able to put aside anything that she'd heard about the case and judge and just judge it on the evidence that you hear in the courtroom. Juror number five responded, yes. The court asked a second time stating, okay, and put aside all those other things that you might have learned to which juror number five again stated yes. Shortly thereafter, the court asked juror number five whether there was any reason she could not follow the court's instruction that the defendant was innocent until proven guilty and that the government had the burden of proving the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Juror number five again responded no in response to the court's inquiry as to whether the juror was hesitating a bit in her answer, juror number five stated, no, there would not be a reason I wouldn't be able to. Where I work, you have to, where I work, we have to follow the order. In response to the court's further questioning regarding whether juror number five would follow this important principle of law regarding the burden of proof and would follow the court's instruction on the law, juror number five said yes to both. During this portion of questioning, Juror number five initially responded, well, as you mentioned, according to when you listen, whatever you hear, so I think I'll give it a shot. As a result, a colloquy followed in which the court explained to juror five that regardless of her answer, juror number five needed to be positive in that response. When asked if she was positive that she could give both sides a fair trial, juror number five said yes, that she could be positive in her belief that she would be fair and impartial. Importantly, juror number five, use of the word think in her response to the court's questions does not demonstrate implied or actual bias. Finding no bias when juror number when juror replied no, I don't think so, after being asked whether she might favor the prosecution, the prosecution's arguments, their evidence, their witness because you're a member of their office and confirmed that she could acquit the defendant if she found the prosecution had not proved its case. Finding juror had no actual or implied bias warranting relief where, when asked whether his experience as a police officer would carry over into petitioner's trial, the juror responded, well, sir, I would certainly like to be able to say that it wouldn't, and I would certainly do my best to see that it did not. Moreover, even if juror number five response demonstrated some initial ambiguity ambiguity about her impartiality, she affirmatively stated that she could be fair and impartial upon further questioning. Trial counsel's decision, therefore, not to challenge her was deficient, was not deficient. Rejecting claim of ineffective assistance of counsel based on trial counsel's decision not to make a four-cause challenge where juror expressed doubts about his ability to be fair and impartial given his employment as a police officer, but subsequently answered in the affirmative upon further questioning about whether he could base his decisions in the case solely on what he would see and hear in the courtroom and where there was no evidence in the record that the court would have granted a challenge for cause, even if defense counsel objected. Holding that the decision not to challenge a juror for cause when the juror expressed that she was sensitive to the issue but ultimately stated she would try to remain fair and impartial did not amount to ineffective assistance of counsel, particularly where based on the juror's response to a hypothetical question posed during voir dire, the attorney may have reasonably inferred that the juror would be sympathetic to the defense strategy he planned to use at trial. 
finding no actual bias where juror actually stated that he could try to be fair and impartial and then subsequently agree, agreed that he would leave sympathy and emotions out of his deliberations and decided from the facts of the witness stand. Concluding that district court did not err in failing to remove prospective juror for cause where juror initially expressed reservations about ability to be impartial, but later promised to try to decide the case based on the evidence presented. Upholding the denial of challenge for cause where a juror indicated he would do his best to decide the case based on evidence presented. The defendant thus cannot show deficient performance or actual bias fails both Strickland prongs. Juror number seven, the defendant asserts that trial counsel was deficient in failing to challenge juror seven because she had heard certain information about the defendant's alleged crimes. The claim is baseless. While juror seven advised that she was aware of who the defendant was and the existence of a case against him, juror seven stated that she had not seen any documentary about the defendant and that her impression of the defendant was neutral because I'm lost of the information you hear about celebrities are not always true. It's mainly for or against the person. Juror number seven also advised that she had not discussed the case with anyone or posted any opinions about the defendant online and made clear that she would remain fair and impartial in deciding the case, indicating that there was no reason she could not follow the court's instruction regarding the burden of proof and the fact that the defendant is innocent until proven guilty. Sylvia, sounds like you're ready to try to jump in. No, that's not me. Okay. During, during the I'm sorry, I forgot I, my husband is sleeping me mute oh, myself. Oh, okay. During the in-person voir dire, when asked whether she could put aside the very little she had heard about the case and rely only on evidence in court, juror seven answered sure. Moreover, when asked if she, if she promised that she would be fair and impartial juror to both sides, juror number seven. Sorry, I do have to jump in. There's another one that they just submitted. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, guys, sorry. No, that's okay. Juror number seven responded, of course, in these circumstances, the defendant cannot show actual bias and his ineffective assistance claim must fail. In addition, the defendant cannot show the trial's counsel decision not to strike juror seven was not strategic. During trial, defense sought to defense counsel sought to emphasize the defendant's musical talents and popularity as part of its trial strategy strategy thus trial counsel may have believed that juror number seven's knowledge of the defendant's music and her lack of knowledge of the me too movement and made juror number seven an attractive juror in any event in light of the juror's unequivocal responses establishing her impartiality the defendant cannot show actual bias or that the court would have granted a motion to strike. Sylvie, so you want to just at least give us an overview of what the new stuff is? Like, what is it? Oh, the new one has a whole bunch of all the Jane Doe's. Girl, Bricky, girl, what, 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 what we doing? Okay, this is the boring part. Let's go move yeah, on. Yeah, let's get to the meat. Because this lady is just email. giving us words now. Check your email. Check your email. I'm checking it right now. But I will say this while I'm pulling this up. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to this. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll pin that. Mm hmm. Oh, and then and they put a whole extra hundred nine pages. She must know this judge don't want doesn't like reading. That's why they. How come she gets to submit forty five pages, one hundred nine? Well, they asked for extension. They asked for the, the extension mm -hmm. of pages. But the first Is thing that's that she... late. Ain't they past time? Oh wait, oh wait. No, they got it in at eleven forty seven. Oh, okay. But still in all, remember she was like, oh no, they don't need that. They don't, they don't need that thick packet. But now here she is, just overwhelming it with 109 pages if she don't get down i'm tripping off this juror number five when i went back up to this page three mm -hmm. uh what they were talking about whether she might favor the prosecution the prosecution argument their evidence their witness because you are a member of their office thank that you should even been on trial they, that police office. officer should not have girl not i said the same jewel. thing to myself should have never even been on the trial been on that jewel. come on come on with it uh, so this new stuff, the government respectfully submits this memorandum of law in opposition to defendant Kale's motion for judgment of acquittal pursuant to Rule 29. Uh, let's see here. She, they're going through the same thing. We factual background, Kelly and, and the Enterprise. I'm scrolling the pages, Sylvia, so just looking to see where we can hit some uh, popping points. Yeah, you tell me I remember the inner circle. Mm -hmm. Himself in the inner circle, including yeah. the business manager. Uh, let's see. I got Kelly's inner circle also assisted Kelly in his personal life. I don't know what page you're on where you saw that 
in a circle. Uh, number page number three. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Kelly surrounded himself with an inner circle, which included a business manager, an accountant, recording engineers, personal assistants, runners, drivers, security personnel, and members of his entourage. For example, Demetrius Smith worked for Kelly, including as a personal assistant and tour manager between 84 and 94, and then for a second stint until 96. Kelly's inner circle is those... Um, Kelly's inner circle in those early years also included his manager, Barry Hankerson, as well as Larry Hood, Bruce Kelly, Tyree Jamison. After Hankinson, Daryl McDavid served as Kelly's manager and as his accountant. Donnie Lyle served as Kelly's musical director. At various times between 2003 and 11, Tom Arnold served as Kelly's studio manager, road manager, and personal assistant. Diana Copeland served as Kelly's personal assistant and later executive assistant beginning in approximately 2004 and staying for approximately 15 years. Kelly also employed many runners, including Nicholas Williams and later Anthony Navarro. Another close associate was Jermaine Maxey, also known as Bubba. Anna Geronda. See, during the later years, his personal assistants included Milton June Brown, George Junebug Kelly, Van Pullen, Cheryl Max, Suzette Mayweather, uh, Alizette Mayweather, Lee Lee, and Cassandra. Uh, Kelly and his inner circle worked to promote Kelly's music and brand, as well as to meet Kelly's demand in his personal life. His inner circle managed the, stu the studio and tour buses, ensuring that they were clean and stocked with food and other supplies. His assistants arranged for nightly basketball games, both in Chicago and while Kelly was on tour. His runners served as receptionists, answering phones and recording messages. At times, his runners required visitors to sign non-disclosure agreements and make copies of their identification documents. His runners escorted visitors, including female guests, to rooms within his residence or his studio. His inner circle ensured that Kelly attended business meetings. His inner circle carried Kelly's backpack, which contained, among other things, iPads that he used to record sexual activity. Kelly's inner circle also assisted Kelly in his personal life. For example, Kelly's inner circle distributed slips of paper with Kelly's telephone numbers to women and girls. Kelly's inner circle selected women and girls to join him backstage and at after parties. When Kelly used the Chicago Tracks studio and when his studio was housed in the basement of his residence in Olympia Fields, his runners regularly picked up fe his female guests from their homes and nearby what, trans what are they trying to do redo the trial on their paperwork here that's what it looked like because if you look at go down a little bit where they talk about his genital herpes and all that what page go down to, um page let's see page number seven read that one all right let's see <clears throat> Kelly's genital, herpes, Kelly's genital herpes diagnosis. Dr. Chris McGrath was Kelly's primary care physician for over 25 years, beginning September 1994 until sometime 2019. At some point after 20, June 20, 2000, sometime after June 2000 and before March 19, 2007, Dr. McGrath concluded that Kelly had contacted or contracted genital herpes, a sexually transmitted disease. As was his regular practice following his diagnosis, Dr. McGrath told Kelly that he had genital herpes and advised Kelly to inform his sexual partners of this fact so they could make a decision whether or not to have sex with you or not. But, but here, she never mentioned about his um, test came out negative. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it. Dr. McGrath further advised Kelly to use a condom during sex and specifically recall Kelly indicating he understood the doctor's advice when Kelly stated, then I should not put it in raw. I should put a hood on it. And Dr. McGrath confirmed to Kelly that he should use a condom during sex. Yes, Kels, put a hood on it. Angela first met Kelly in 1991 through her friend Tiffany during the break between her freshman and sophomore year at high school. Angela was 14 or 15 and at the time aspired to be an entertainer. She wanted to sing and dance. Tiffany was also in high school attending Kenwood Academy in Chicago and an aspiring singer. Tiffany invited Angela to go to Kelly's apartment in the South Loop of Chicago, telling Angela that Kelly was a singer who had recently released a single. Tiffany and Angela went to Kelly's apartment with two other girls who were also in high school. When they arrived at the apartment, Bruce Kelly, Demetrius Smith, and Larry Hood were at the apartment with the defendant. Everyone in the apartment joked around for about an hour in the communal space across from the kitchen, after which Kelly went into another room, and each of the high school girls, including Angela, followed him into the same room, one by one, at different intervals. Either Tiffany or Kelly invited Angela into the room. 
When she entered, Angelo observed that three other high school girls in different areas of the room, one was taking off her clothes, another was standing there, and the third was taking off her shirt. Kelly asked Angelo to climb on top of him. Uh, startled, Angelo paused for a moment, but then did exactly what Kelly asked her to do. Kelly then asked Angela to straddle him and to ride him. And she asked Kelly if she could grab a condom. Kelly said he did not have any. And Angela told him she did and obtained it. Angela then put the condom on Kelly and the two had sexual intercourse in the presence of three other high school girls. In the room, Kelly also had sexual intercourse with at least one other high school girl. Sexual contact with all of them, including by caressing and sucking their breasts and fingering each one of the girls. They were, they're still trying to throw mud. They didn't have to put these details in there. You can't do all that. When Angela, yeah, they, they, they unprofessional, they, yeah. they, they grabbing straws now. Yeah. When Angela, grabbing straws. yeah. When Angela and the others left the room, Angela observed that Demetrius, but here's the key. These are uncharged, these are uncharged, um, acts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when Angela and the other girls left the room, Angela observed that Demetri Smith, Bruce Kelly, Larry Hood were all still in the apartment. Before Angela and the three other high school girls, high school girls left the apartment, Kelly invited them to return the following day, which they did. For the next few years, Angela saw Kelly almost every day, either at his apartment or at the CRC Recording Company, a recording studio in Chicago. Angela saw Kelly along with Tiffany and a different assortment of young ladies on a regular basis. At some point in 1991, Angela stopped attending high school after Kelly gave her the option to either go to school or sing. At the time, Angela, Tiffany, and another girl were singing together as a group, which Kelly later named Second Chapter. Either Kelly continued to have sexual... I can't uh, believe they did 109 pages of 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 drama. This is like, this is like how when they Tasha really was on the stand, the it's like when Tasha was on the stand testifying, trying to give you know drop uh, you know gossip. We'll see see what had happened was. Well, they don't need all this in here. They trying Kelly, to refresh the judge's mind. I guess that I don't girl, know. Crazy. that's ain't crazy. That it. Ain't stuff. that it? That's a mess. <clears throat> Kelly continued to have sexual intercourse with Angela while she was between the ages of approximately 15 through 17 on multiple occasions at his apartment. And, and let me interrupt real quick. When Kelly yeah, said, this is a bunch of crap. But listen, oh, when, 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 when Kelly said, come on, get up on this thing and ride it. And Angela said, well, you need a condom. Kelly said, I don't have none. What did Angela say? I got one. And she retrieved it. She was ready to ride. And commenced to riding. So that you carrying condoms? I'm sorry. That takes all this out to out, out, it takes uh uh. Mm -mm. How you got condoms, but what? Okay. Kelly continued to have intercourse with Angela while she was between the ages of approximately 15 through 17 on multiple occasions at his apartment and the recording studio and while they were on the road. Angela did not want to have sexual intercourse with Kelly. Oh but did so because he told her and the other girls they had to pay their dues. Mm. Kelly no, also no. asked. Mm. They, they're ridiculous, y'all. It's 109 pages, people. Yeah, we, 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 we will nonsense. read it all tonight. It's, no, I mean, we're not going to read it tonight. We're going to do it tomorrow. Yeah, we, we got the gist of what's going on. We, we see what they're doing. We see what they're doing. Um, but I will say what we read first, she basically, uh, Getty's, basically laid out why. She basically amplified why Bon Jean said the their, his counsel was ineffective. What, what Gettys is saying they should have done and what they did do in certain cases when they, you know, struck a juror and questioned a juror and what have you, where also where it was key, where Kelly's defense didn't do that. Just yeah, I cannot believe he's... Wait, 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 wait. Go down page 45. Oh, the bottom 45, y'all. Read, me, read what they put. I mean, hold on. Let me speed forward. Oh, hold on. I mean, that is so unprofessional wait, and so wait, ghetto. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said 44 or 45? 45, you 45 right at the bottom. Discussion? It says, Kelly oh. told Faith that he would subsequently, if she did not answer truthfully, then when Faith responded, this is nothing but the transcript. When Kelly Take returned this. to the room, he told Faith he would not, that he would have returned sooner if she had if she had greeted him properly when he came in earlier. Kelly then directed Faith to take off her clothes and walk back and forth. Faith told Kelly she had her period, even though she did not, because she did not want to have sex with him. Kelly sighed and said, well, 
why did you come? He then told Faith to take off her pants and she walked back and forth three times in a bodysuit. Kelly then went inside one of the smaller rooms within the larger room and told Faith to come inside. The room was the size of a walk-in closet. When Faith entered the small room, she saw a gun on an ottoman in the room. Kelly's demeanor changed and he got real serious. He moved the gun near him, sat down in a chair and told Faith to stand across from him. He then told Faith to pose and took photos of her with his iPad while complaining that she was not being sexy enough and became irritated. Kelly then proceeded to ask Faith a series of questions, including how many men had seen her naked and how many male friends she had. Kelly told Faith there would be consequences if she did not answer truthfully. When Faith responded in a manner he did not like, Kelly stated, do you want to take that back? Faith said no. Kelly then paused, got a stern look on his face, on his face, telling Faith that he and her father had the same gift of spiritual discernment and that he would know if she was lying. Faith was taken aback. Kelly then stood up, put a pillow on the floor and told Faith to get on her knees, which she did. The defendant then pulled out his penis, grabbed the back of Faith's neck, told her to get <laughs> this is like a book <laughs> on, the, on, on the knob, on the knob and pushed her forward so her mouth made contact with his penis. Kelly's gun remained nearby when this occurred. Faith was intimidated and did not want to give Kelly oral sex, but she did so throughout. Or, yeah, throughout, Kelly's hand remained on the back of her neck, guiding her. Faith did not feel like she could leave the room because she was under Kel, Kel's rules and he had a weapon, so she wasn't even going to step out of line. That's a lie. <sighs> But yet, some some way or another, following her final trip to New York in February, Faith stopped seeing Kells and filed a lawsuit. It's just it's it's just too much. It's all just too much. In this closing motion, guess who they mentioned? Where you at, girl? Tell say what page? Let's read along with you, baby. Uh, uh, over there, uh, I'm on the first set. Oh, oh okay. Jocelyn, uh, on the uh, in the motion on page forty four. So on. read that part. Read that part. I want to read it. The Joyce man. It says, um, "Let me go back up to because uh, it okay. referenced uh, Nicole. Okay. Uh, go to forty two. All right, let me, let me do control F up on this mug. You said forty two. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Who's that snowman? Oh, Ryan. Ryan. Oh, okay. Let me, <laughs> let me mute. 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 <laughs> he said, rattled. <laughs> okay, I'm on 42 with you, girl. Go ahead, on. Where is that now? Let's go. Um, well, we might need to go back up because when they start, I think they uh talking yeah. about Nicole and her relationship with the two. Oh, uh, yeah. In addition know. to any conflict. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So right at 36. That starts, yeah. <laughs> Let's start up there. You about to rock it? Go ahead. You start. All right. All right. Well, okay. On page bottom of thirty six. In addition, any conflict related start, to start me? at thirty nine analysis. That's when oh, they. That's all when right. they Perfect. come up with yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect analysis. Uh -uh. No. Okay. I might be on the wrong doc, girl. Oh, Damn. the first document that she gave us. Yeah. Okay. You're saying forty two in the red. Oh. Oh. I'm saying thirty nine on. Let me see. Maybe 34. Okay. Because on the red, it says 42. Yeah. Analysis. Let me find it. You see analysis. Okay. I see it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The defendant, the defendant alleges that he was denied effective counsel because Ms. Blank Beaker purportedly labored under disabling conflict. Is Becker, ma'am. Is Becker. Bump her. <laughs> Ms. Blank Bumper. <laughs> Piss me off. Purportedly labored under a disabling conflict of interest that was imputed to the entire defense team. The defendant's argument is meritless. It is based on incorrect claims that this conflict was unwaivable and imputed to the entire defense team, which included three other independent counsel from different firms who represented him at trial. During the curical hearing, the court determined that Miss Blank Bumper uh, may have developed a relationship of trust with Jane a.k.a. Jocelyn, resulting in certain possible conflicts, including creating, among other obligation, uh, a duty of loyalty to them. Assuming that Miss 
Nicole, relationship with Jane amounted to an actual conflict, said conflict was clearly waivable. Several factors demonstrate that the conflict was waivable, including that the relationship was brief, limited in scope, and terminated prior to Jane's cooperating with the government. Uh, what, five minutes before? <laughs> um, the relationship did not implicate Nicole's own personal financial or liberty interest, and the defendant was represented by three other unconflicted retained counsel who could, and one of them who in fact did, cross-examine cross Jane during trial. The defendant has proffered no facts from which it could be concluded that Nicole's potential conflict amounted to an actual conflict of interest, nor do any of these of the case cited by the defendant support the notion that Nicole's uh, conflict was not waivable. Instead, the defendant incorrectly conflates the issue of whether actual conflict exists with the question of whether the defendant may waive said conflict. As discussed above, it is well established that an actual conflict is not synonymous with an unwaivable conflict. <sighs> but even though the second trial, the second conflict was actual, it was also waivable. That's case of cited case details. Indeed, it is rare. It is a it is the rare exception where an actual conflict cannot be waived by the defendant. And even if the conflict here was actual, it does not constitute one of those rare instances. Rather, the conflict represents one of the lesser conflicts, such as an attorney representation of two or more defendants or his prior representation of a trial witness that is generally waivable. OK, but she was representing Jocelyn or whatever the girl's name is, Jocelyn. Um, Holding that the defendant, well, this is this is case citation. Um, hold on, y'all. It says it was nonetheless waivable. We have generally found this type of conflict is waivable. Um, in addition, any conflict re related to Nicole, conflict arising from any assumed attorney client relationship with Jane, was not imputed to the defendant's other counsel. The defendant's reliance on uh, U.S. versus Stein in support of this claim to contrary is misplaced. While Stein held that counsel's conflict was imputed to the other attorneys in the counsel's small firm, independent counsel had no such conflict. Um, Let's see, holding the attorney's conflict from prior representation of trial witnesses waivable because, among other things, independent attorneys could be hired to cross-examine those witnesses on conflicts counsel's behalf. Uh, Nicole is also a solo practitioner, and the defendant's other counsel each have their own independent practices. Thus, Marisers, Canick, Farinella, and Scala were not members of any firm with Nicole and remain with Nicole. They weren't in a firm with Nicole and remain unconflicted. Finding that um, the conflict was not imputed to cold counsel, given that the record did not indicate a general partion, partnership relationship between the attorneys extending beyond the representation of the petitioner himself. Given that Mr. Kanick, one of the defendant's three independent unconflicted counsel, conducted a vigorous cross-examination of Jane at trial, the defendant has not shown a lapse in representation resulted from the conflict, even after assuming circumstances presented an actual conflict, nor can the defendant demonstrate that he was prejudiced in any way by Nicole's conflict if it was only a potential conflict. This is this is a USA at her best. And and you know what? She's citing some case law um, as to why these attorneys that represented Kells weren't can't, you know, as a whole be uh um uh, uh, waived from that con that conflict of interest. There's other. There's. I'm sure Bonjean has other case law that says that they can't because they were all working in unison. So they they've picked and chosen laws that will benefit them. They probably got these case these citations from Nicole because why in God's name would she even put herself on that trial knowing good and mm, well, right that the appearance of a conflict, mm -hmm. you're not going to tell me that at no time between the start of that trial and the end of that trial, that Jocelyn didn't reach out, send you a text or, or sit by you in the food court and saying, how's this going? You know what I mean? It, it, this it's, it's, it's dirty hands. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if Canick, and I think um, <clears throat> Sylvie had mentioned before that Canick didn't pull up on day one. 
No, it was kind of like what about a month before. Thank you. So, 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 so you, everybody's, it's a hot mess, as Bon Jean said. I think she said within two weeks before, two weeks before, the, I think she said before it ended, um, in her mo, in her, the response that she just, uh, that we just read, um, that the internal workings of Kale's team was in disarray. Yeah. How do we know they weren't arguing Are about listen? that it was this conflict? Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is this is a whole hot mess. And this is the standard of quality that AUSA Gettys has. Because my thing is, when she saw that this stuff was there, she should have been like, wait, hold up. Y'all about to make us waste the state of New York good earned money during COVID trying to file a case that if y'all find this man guilty and he appeals, there's hellacious grounds for this man to at least file an appeal. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. See, Carla McWilliams said, well, I guess Levi's letter, I guess Levi's letter is no good either. Maybe he will stop taking, ooh, girl, he will stop taking credit for someone else works. Mm. <laughs> you know, they're just doing too much, y'all. Yeah. They're doing way too much. Um, this is just, just out of control. Mm, mm, mm. I can't wait to see what she fired back on because she gets the last say. Mm. Well, she, like I said, I bet you she's going to bring some other site law that's probably more current. And and you know what? And Kells may not stand a chance in, in Hades if it was the same legal team that was arguing these same arguments. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were his attorney, but we didn't do it right. He's got a whole brand new lawyer. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it more uh, from an objective standpoint for her to come in and say, hey, I'm not Monday Monday morning quarterbacking. I'm looking at how this, camp, this team over here, whether they were independent or all in, of a firm, this team conducted themselves ridiculously. And, and, and what she said in the initial uh, motion, she goes, there's no way that them not, you know, going further with the juror or trying to strike the juror. She used the phrase, uh, it couldn't have been trial strategy. And this is why Geddes is coming back saying, no, nah, they, they hope that the police officer, Kells is a black man from the shy. Exactly. Nobody want a police officer on their trial, especially exactly. if he was a white man. Come yeah. on, somebody. Stop all this. Yeah, they full of it. And I know they only get a certain amount of, of times that they can strike someone. Right, I think is it about three three of them. I so like one time when she was like, well, they was uh hoping uh, that they would be strategically, but then they knew yeah. we could. Well, you know, if they had a motion to strike and then you could have came right behind them and well, said, oh, you know, what's the point? But you, you know what, Rhoda? Here's the thing. Maybe the defense, Kel's defense was thinking, well, you guys got to have some level of uh, 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 of standard of quality. So we know y'all going to move to strike this person. Ain't no way y'all going to let them in. But it, 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 it fooled them because they let some of these jurors on the stand. Mm -hmm. They didn't argue them down. I'd like to know who, well, I'd like to know more about the jurors that AUSA Gettys did strike. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'd mm -hmm. like to know what their responses were to some to this questionnaire and what made them want to strike them. And then, and the ones that they wanted to strike was Kel's team like, no, don't strike them. Because that would give us a real good insight as to what their strategy could possibly have been. Exactly. Uh, to me, with these jurors not coming out, haven't haven't been out, oh, it ain't, right. like, ain't no telling who was on that jewel. Girl, you got, you got a, 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 an officer that's that's on the side of the prosecution. I don't yeah. care what you say. What you say they're gonna ride with they ride with their teams so all, all day, girl. They all all day. day. And um, you know what? And, and and that is a really good point, Rhoda, because the other thing is, is usually on these high profile cases, these jurors come out. Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. proud of the work they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we found him guilty because he had strung her up and shot her and this and that in two thirds. But uh, you're right. Hey, I ain't heard from not Nan Juror on this New York, Brooklyn case. Mm hmm. And maybe they're sequestered until, or, you know, a gag or No, their job is over with. 
did us no gag order. That's what I'm over saying. It, over it. But they ain't said nothing. So what's T? Because it was dirty. It was dirty. Come on. Yeah, because I got my certificate for doing jury duty and my little uh, little bitty check that I got to turn into my employee. So, yeah, I was released. This is out of control. This is out of control. And I'm looking at this little footnote. In any event, even if the allegations were deemed to have been true, Jocelyn was called as a witness at trial. So what, Gettys? Wait a minute. Read it again. Say it again. It's at the bottom of page 38. It's a footnote. So she, she she was a witness. Did it, it, says, I, I, I read it. They, read they it. decided not to call her, though, but she was a witness for the government. No, read it. Read it. Read it, it says, again. It Good. says, in any event, even if the allegations were deemed to be true, Jocelyn was not called as a witness at trial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the point is, it still doesn't matter. You don't have to be a witness if I'm having all these back channel conversations with you, possibly, mm -hmm. allegedly. Yeah, but she was a witness on a list, even though she did not call. They didn't and call her. That's what I'm saying. Nicole should have never showed up. And to me, I hope that uh, Bonjean can go ahead and, and just from the very beginning, when it was clear that 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 you know she should have been taken off the case, mm -hmm. because how much authority did Nicole have in running this case? That's the other question. How much influence did she wield between the multiple independent attorneys, you know, which set the the course or the defense of Kells in the direction that it went in? So here you are with this conflict uh, uh, of relationship with Jocelyn and mm -hmm. then you're you, how much influence do you have on the defense team yeah because after Steve them left she kind of like was like the main thing until Kenny got on dude so it's a hot heaping mess that's what this is mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know Sylvie Mm, mm, mm. It's a lot. They were saying that even if Jocelyn was called as a witness, uh, there was three other uh, attorneys that could have cross-examined her. But that's not the point. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're right. Mm -hmm. And and but see, this is Getty's position. This is her justifying all of her, you know, because a real a real person would have said this would have never made it to uh, a transcript. Because they would not have, well, just like uh, Zilly in the judge in Cardi B's case, that man is diligent about the care and the, the process that happened as that trial went along. And you can, and you look at the things that went on there, he made sure that, okay, I'm not even going to give y'all an opportunity to come back later and say that this behavior and that behavior, and even when he when he when he told the truth, he spoke facts on Olga. He apologized the following day, saying, "Hey, I meant what I said. I just didn't say it nicely." Hmm. But even that was sufficient to clean it up. If if she if they would have tried to use that in appeal, because the very next day he did that apology in front of the jury. But now, this, yeah. Now, yeah. what about the text messages? Let's go by the text messages. What page, darling? This should be in there. Hold what? on a second. I just read them. Mm. Hold on one second. It's on. Yeah. The, it's on the Jane one. That the uh, the next page. Oh, okay, so not on. Wait a minute, I'm lost now. We we sitting on three we're three actions. <laughs> we're on three actions right now. Mm, mm, mm. The one that we with all the girls, well, the ladies' names. Uh, the last one I send you. Let me see here. Why they got to list all that in they in they motion? The last one you see. Go to Anna. Go to. Is I mean, this, it does. Is and the title does it say response or second response? Oh, um, it should be second response. Okay. And you say where they listed all the names? The names. Anna, hold on a second. Girl, listen. You know what? You know I'm about to go. You know I'm about to uh jump. You know I'm. <laughs> You know, I got to get in on some of this here, girl. You what got to. Is? Come on. This is a little bit too much for me to take. What page is it? Hold on, hold on. Uh, go to table content. I'm in oh, it. It says Jane. No, um, I think that's oh, eight. That's 13? Thirty-nine. Oh, 30, page 33. No, I don't read them. them uh, that's Roman 33. Numerals. That's page 33. Okay. Bump them Roman numerals. <laughs> go to page 33, everybody. Mm, mm, mm. I'm trying to get there. I'm so upset with this. What? 
uh, where it starts with Jane. Oh, Rhoda, I'm gonna let you read it because I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, just in looking at it, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get with some of this and, and, and put this in here. Sylvia, you know how I like to do it, girl. Yeah, I know. You know how I like to do it. No, um, go down to. I'm trying to get to oh, it right now. Go, go down lower. They did the whole case inside of this. I'm so sick and tired of this uh, AUSA Gettys. <laughs> Sylvia, can I say one cuss word on your channel? Go ahead. I'm so sick of her ass. Okay? <laughs> and I cannot get over the fact that why is, what's her name? Angela? Why is she running around with condoms on deck? Why does she have condoms on her person? Okay, and, yeah, and go. Go, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. Go no, to sorry. page 35, the beginning. Oh, I'm down here. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. Mm. The beginning, at the end of the summer, mm -hmm. when Jane was scheduled to return to, to Orlando. Go ahead, read that. Oh, you keep on reading, Sylvia. You're sounding good. You keep on reading, girl. I'm happy. Because you know I'm happy to this on my remember, channel. Remember Ronald's here. <laughs> Rhoda, go on and read it, girl. I don't have that. I just got the first motion. I just send it to you. Go look at your email. Uh, okay, let me look because I went over there, but I didn't see it. Uh, I, I can tell you right now, I got to put this on my channel, Sylvie. I got to. Absolutely. I have to. It's out of control. I just got the first one. Hold on, Rhoda. I don't think you said it. Yes, I did. But hold on. <laughs> and, and, are y'all y'all on Eastern time? Isn't it almost one o'clock where y'all at? It's almost twelve o'clock where I am. Yeah, I'm on Central time too. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now go ahead, Don Rhoda. You got it now. Okay, it ain't came over yet. You know how you know how slow my stuff is. You know what? These people are full of crap. They wrote that. They it says text messages. Authored by Kelly to Jane, instructing I Jane, I, I need you to be hundred percent. I need to be trusted mm. by you one now, one million percent. Mm. Don't even hesitate if to do. They want to put out everything in here. Mm. Mm. Okay, here it is. Okay, which one am I am I pulling up? You gonna no, be on page, page thirty five? Okay, the beginning. Okay. I'm getting off after here, Sylvie. It's just, it's just. Just, uh, 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 uh. I'm, I'm just let you know I'm about to slam my channel tomorrow with these because okay. I'm looking at this right here. What you ooh, wee, ooh, wee. Mm. Okay. I got second response, and you said page 35. Yeah, Rhoda, take your time, girl. This is out of control. <laughs> <laughs> out of control. Let me go down to 35. Let's see. And see, and I got I got class tomorrow night, Sylvie. So Man. yeah, at uh seven PM Central from seven to eight. So I'm, in here. Look at um, this. I, look at that footnote. I've been stealing money from the stash you told me about. I also was selling your jewelry too, so I could oh my God. What page what foot oh, so, uh, the footnote? Oh my girl, god. On what page? What page of the footnote, girl? What page you on? Thirty eight. Thirty eight page. Okay, because I was I didn't see the, okay. Oh, yeah, I ain't not on that one. Let's see, 38 footnote. Okay, I don't see no footnote. Did that open up the wrong? Is this the uh, 190 yeah. feet paper? Yeah. yeah. It says, uh, it says, Kelly told Jane that she could oh. not forgive me for I've been stealing money from your stash you told, you told me about. I was also selling your jewelry too when I could because it was just a rush and fun. Mm. Handwritten letter by Jane, including, I also did something bogus just in case you caught me stealing and let me go. I decided I would spank myself really hard until I had bruises on me. Handwritten letter by Jane, including, I desperately wanted you to know how I craved you. Oh, yeah, that's from that's from our Azriel. Th these are the letters that she said that Kells yeah. made her write. I ain't about made her write this crap. She wrote this. Uh. If, you, if you don't bring me. Oh, wait a minute. I desperately wanted you to want me how I craved you. I started to make threats to you and I'm sorry. If you don't bring me that, mm, Dang. then I'm going to tell everybody you raped me. I'm going to tell everyone you've been raping me since I've been a minor. Wow. 
Why would he make her write something like that? Wow. This is crazy. Oh my God. Says an iPad recovered from Kel's residence on the day of his arrest depicted Kelly spanking another woman in apparent punishment. Still image showed Kelly spank one of Kel one of Kelly's female guests while guest was naked, crying and visibly. So a still photo showed Kelly spanking her and her crying and and they could hear her crying in pain. Well, and his arm was moving. And and the way and the way Jane Doe, number five. Yeah, did they show any of that in court? No, this is the sealed stuff that they put in here. Oh. Oh. But this stuff we weren't privy to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly was also required. Kelly also required Jane to have a sexual contact with other men and women at Kelly's direction, including the women living with Kelly, his assistants, Lily and Cassandra and Alex, a man she had never seen. Everybody's name. Had never even seen prior to Kelly directing her to have sex with him. Kelly decided with whom she would have sexual contact and when it would occur. Kelly recorded most of these encounters and always remained in charge, directing each participant precisely what to do and when to do it. Faith. And, you know, I, I saw an interview with Faith. And, you know, of course, they coming from, you know, families as preachers and pastors. And that's a whole telling situation in and of itself. Yeah, this There's no way that the pastor of a church is going to say, yeah, you know, you know the pastor is not going to get, a, you know, and get up and say, I got, this is my prodigal daughter. They're wow. not going to say that. Of course, they're going to spin the narrative and make Faith appear like, you know, she was this pristine, you know, choir girl. And then the interview, you're showing just, you know, cleavage and ass. And you're showing it, you know, you're. you're Has she you're, been arrested before? I don't know, but she's projecting, she's promoting. Yeah, she's been arrested for drugs. Yeah, all the sexuality, but we're supposed to believe. And and you're and you're promoting it very comfortably. Like I say, I'm not judging her. I ain't mad at her. You're doing it well, you know. Um, but you don't get to to uh, 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 you don't get to come up off of that image and seem and appear comfortable in it, and then turn around and say, "Well, you know, I, I was a victim." If if what Kels did Kels turn you into this sex kitten that you're out in public now looking like, because you're very comfortable with it. And, you know, and at the risk of sounding like I'm victim shaming, it's not what I'm trying to do, but it's hard to draw the two. Because if you were, look at a real sexual, uh, sexually abused person, their their whole demeanor, even after they've had therapy, is the last thing they're going to do is put themselves out on Front Street with their ass. Take, for example, those women that was held in that house in Cleveland. You don't hear Thank about you, them. Girl. No. Those are I in the movie, but you don't hear them coming out afterwards. They and just, all of them, all of these girls, are on being interviewed and and doing and, and, and being and during the interviews are like, yeah, well, so here's my next project coming up. That's what leads me to, to also believe that what Jane Doe, a, Jane Doe number five, aka Azriel Clary, what she said in the letter that it wasn't until the mm -mm -mm's got involved. Promise these people book deals, movies, uh, reality shows, things of that nature. Uh, that's why that's why all the girls turned on them. Every person you see being interviewed is talking about their upcoming project. Oh, yeah, well, I got a book. I got an album. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And look at my ass. See, I can turn. Let me break it down for you. Break it down. You know what? And And, and then on top of that. You flew in and flew out and drove in and drove out. You just did it too many damn times. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, but I, I ain't buying it. No. Nope. And then y'all favorite AUSA, Elizabeth Geddes, up in here. This is really just a soft porn novel that she submitted. A hundred page, a hundred nine pages of soft porn up in this piece. They mm -hmm. just reading it and reading it. They probably yeah, this is porn. over and over. This is porn because they talking about putting it in her mouth and. Oh my God! Turn around and oh, they got put on your backwards, emotion. grabbing oh, a condom, backwards, putting, putting it on, and mouth. then riding. I put it on them, and then I got to riding. Mm-hmm. You remind me of a G. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so it, they're just doing too much. It, it's just doing too much. And, and and this is an unprofessional brief, as far as I'm concerned. It is very unprofessional. Very they know this is going in the public record. Very unprofessional. Mm. When Faith got home to her parents' house, she texted Kelly a selfie. Did Kelly make her do it? No. She texted Kelly a selfie and her name and went to sleep. Hmm. Several hours later, after she woke up, Faith noticed that Kelly had texted her back, complimenting her and inviting him to come see him while he was still in San Antonio. Faith did not take Kelly up on his invitation, but began communicating with him regularly by text, phone calls, and over FaceTime. Why are you still hollering at the dude? Exactly. Why are you communicating with him? Mm -hmm. And you say, you say, Faith declined the invitation, but you don't say why. Mm. Was the father and them taking her to a church conference? <laughs> huh? Was you going to the uh, Kojic? Exactly. I don't know what their religion is. And Lord, please forgive me because I ain't trying to make fun, make light. Mm. I'm just really trying to trying to draw a picture here. If you're going to put all this that, that Kelly was sticking his fingers in here and there and putting, his, you're putting her mouth on this and that, Tell us why, because it had to be a clean reason. Oh, wait, wait. No, no. They said that the, the labor, the labor is the form of having sex, sexual yeah. contact. Yeah. Making the labor. It, making it slave, trying to make it like a, use a, let's a slave, slave and trafficking. But mm -hmm. tell us why Faith did not go to meet with Kells while he was still in San Antonio. Because clearly it wasn't because she never wanted to talk to him again. Because Continue texting and FaceTiming him. So go ahead and, and finish the sentence and tell us, AUSA Gettys, why did Faith decline the invitation? But you don't want to leave that out because it might really make it clear that the only reason why she didn't go is because her mama and her daddy, allegedly, I don't know, I'm, this is, I'm just making this up, but th th you had another obligation. I agree with Elvira. They're just trying to humiliate. They know this is going to be public. So now they're trying to humiliate him further. Even more. Yeah. Elvira said they are still trying to humiliate Kelly. Go on and say it, Elvira. Ain't that the truth? Yep. They don't know. The they're they going to put all this out in the public. So, yeah. It's just out. Of, it's just out of control. It just to show how nasty those girls was. Queen Diva says she back on the stroll with her girl Summer Bunny drive me crazy. Mm hmm Absolutely. Make them look bad, yeah. Says, can they do that? What was the point of of seal ooh, of seal? Yeah, all this. I don't, they I don't put it in the rebuttal. Mm. They only go with the motion. I mean, what was this for? It's ghetto. They yeah. don't even go with the motion. Ghetto, ghetto. They they pulling straws. They they're, they're, they're yeah, they're hoping to inflame the judge, you know. But the judge, I can't wait to see what she says, because I, I just can't wait to see what she said. She talking about getting permission to go to the bathroom from the van. What the heck does that got to do with the price of tea in China? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, it's 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 the continuation of the smear campaign of R. Kelly. All of these things. I, listen, if he did do all of these things, which you know, if he did do all of these things, um, I, I, these girls were these girls were willing participants, and just by virtue of the fact that Faith exercised authority when she declined the invitation. Now she may have been in the in his presence. And, you know, maybe she was intimidated by the gun being in the room, but that's not enough. I mean, that's not enough for him having a gun in the room. If, if, if her testimony was he had his hand on a gun, it was pointing at me and he made me, you know, work that, my, work that knob, you know, then you might really have a, a whole case of intimidation. But just because it was in the room. So can we, uh, you know, automatically assign you as being, um, you know, loose, for lack of a better term, because you can't, because one of the other girls pulled up with the condoms? This this memorandum, they said it's in response to, I guess, that motion of acquittal 
Mm-hmm. This is why they, this is why they presented this. Mm-hmm. So they got one motion for the uh, Bong Jin retrial, mm-hmm. retrial, and then this one for the acquittal. So they had to bring out everything from the trial to show why he was uh, convicted. Mm-hmm. And I'm flipping through here where they were making a reference of Kel's um, of uh, Kel's wanting to be called daddy. You know. Saturday, Sylvie, when we was on your back channel, we was doing a, you know, we had the Kells Marathon going on. There's a couple of songs, a couple of infer- uh, instances where he referred to himself as daddy. So, you know, would they just, would they please stop this? And y'all know in our hood, you know, if you got a good man at the crib and he's call a daddy, yes, you yes, already yes. know. You yes. can't, we don't tell you. And mom, daddy. It's a whole lot of, my, 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 uh, if it's good to you, father in law. He was a preacher, and he used to call, uh, "Mama, what you want to eat?" And Thank say, you, oh, oh, Daddy. And 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 look, and that's the clean version of it, Rhoda, yeah. because you know, if, for for if you at if you got a good man at the crib, and he's taking care of things, you 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 just might slip and call him Daddy, and he ain't even got to tell you to. So exactly. quit trying to take this phrase, this exactly. little good nickname, and turn Uh-oh. it into something. Cash is up in here. Uh oh. Cash. He says she's sick of hearing that. You're hearing what, Cash? Say what you say, girl. What? Right. There was no gun. They said oh. it wasn't, the, and, and the, the thing they're saying it was on a table. Come on. Come on, Cash. Come on up here and give you me a in shot. You in Chicago, girl? Don't act like you don't know about a gun. Stop this, Cash. Come on up here. Come on up, Cash, and sound off. <laughs> this don't make no sense. It's crazy. Mm. And and see, I feel like a, a a black AUSA wouldn't even put that in there because especially if there's some black jurors on there because they know that we're going to interpret that as normal vernacular in our hood, in our you know what I'm saying in our in our circles. They told her to call him daddy. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, come on, people. Just stop it. It's too much. Too much, too much, too much. What's that sweet one said? He got a whole song. Come to daddy. Usher got a song. Daddy's home. Come mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. AUSA look like she ain't had no daddy. That's what that is. That's what mm-hmm. the problem is. Allegedly. <laughs> Perspective said Daddy Yankee, Big Daddy came. Big Come on. Exactly. Come on. What about Biggie? What did we gonna try to pull some charges on Biggie? Oh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Because he said he loved it when you call me big. But come oh. on, y'all. This is Perspective Me said Poppy Chubo Chulo. This out of control. Puff Daddy. <laughs> Daddy Lolo. Daddy Yankee and Big Daddy. That's what I'm talking about. And now all of a sudden, Kel's used the word daddy. And, and it's just, it's a crime. It's blasphemy. Yeah. Girl. Uh-uh. Wait a minute. <laughs> what did, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm looking at <laughs> You don't want no daddy. Wait, perfection bullies Chloe. Who calling me? Oh, that's daddy. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Be careful for AUSA Getty sees you. Uh. She might she might bring some charges up on you. Lord have mercy. <laughs> so Johnny said, if he did that to me, I would have been calling him daddy too. If he did what, Johnny? <laughs> sure. All this stuff they saying he did to Just mm, mm, mm. a mess. A it's mess. a hot mess. <sighs> She's still the AUSA Gaddies are still lame. So they trying to get all their good good in because they don't have the final say. Exactly. Exactly. She's going to come back with them. She's going to come back with them. Hit them hard. Mm-hmm. And then they can do. Right. Perfection said, I heard someone say, Papi Chulo. <laughs> Shout out to Toria Williams. It's out. It's just out of control. Yeah. Too much. Just out of control. Mm. So when Faith indicated that she was not into girls, Kelly responded, well, if I want both of you, 
to work this knob. <laughs> <laughs> ain't this crazy? I mean, ain't no rope. Ultimately, <laughs> it's about pleasing me. So you're going to work this knob with her. That's what Hell yeah. said. But he yeah. used he used direct language. If he would have used the word penis, I would have said that. But I mean, y'all know what he said. This is worth the blue. Blue. And fifty shades of gray. Girl, what you done said? What you done said? Oh, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. That's all you can do. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Out of control. I don't know. I don't know. Sylvia, you still there, girl? It's just crazy. I've ever said most all entertainers have guns. Yeah. That's why so many rappers kept getting out. Big bus. <laughs> Come on, exactly. It's a Ti, and then uh, 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 shoot, this I army, mean, a lot of rappers. All of them. They carry them, especially they going down the highway. Come on. They manage some stuff. They carry them. Hello, ladies. Hey. Hey. How you doing? doing All good right. Day. I was just listening to you. I just got notification. It's been so much going on the internet. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going over here on one sector. Then uh it notified that uh Bonjean dropped another. I was I ain't know which what what to do. Where to but, go? He's been fire. <laughs> He's been fire. Hey girl. How you doing, baby? Good, How you doing? Good. Listen, they didn't even reply to the government, didn't even reply to the last motion, did they? I believe this is it. They did reply to it because remember, they replied by saying that uh they don't think Bonjean should be able to submit those 65 pages and that he did have a fair trial and all that. So they did, they did reply. That's all they said. I mean, they said a whole bunch, but I'm just, Oh, I didn't see that. I missed mm -hmm. that. So, so they did. Cause I know she dropped the motion back in February. I didn't know that they had replied since cause nobody was really talking about it or making a big deal out of it. Yeah, so they they submitted, and then Bonjean put in her uh, sixty five page, and then the judge said, "Nope, break it down to 20. And then Bonjean came back and said, "Look, I need the whole sixty five pages." And so then the judge said, "Okay," and then Bonjean put it in. So the the uh, AUSA Gettys had already made her, you know, had already s sent in her opinion or her response to why they shouldn't even be allowed to get the um the acquittal or the retrial whichever motion it was that she was responding to it must not have been strong who um Gaddy's? yeah it must not have been a strong comeback because i don't see nobody talking about it or whatever it must not have been strong at all yeah it carried no weight she was there and that if i recall correctly just off the top she was saying and of course all this information i got i got it from sylvie but um if I recall, they were trying to say that um, they were trying to say, no, they had they had time to to address these concerns. That's that's mm -hmm. where and why Bonjean had came in there and broke it down and said, wait a minute. We had COVID. We had the lockdown at the uh, 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 Metropolitan Detention Center with nobody could get any Zoom calls. Um, it was a nationwide lockdown. And so the only time she was able to finally get to meet with her client Kales was a week before they were supposed to get everything submitted. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Right. I remember that. Right. And and that's, I, right. Cause mm -hmm. but wasn't that before, like when she, um, wasn't that beforehand, like the the sixty some pages or fifty six pages or something? Yeah. Was it fifty two, fifty six, something? It was fifty six and sixty five or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I know mm -hmm. and she had put in that one, but after that, that's when they said no. She had enough time. That's when they put that motion in that you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah. the prosecutor was trying to say they was trying to uh, make the judge not give her uh, the time the, to respond to, to apply the extension. And so, when when Bonjean first presented the extra pages, she didn't get permission to because the judge only wanted what 20, 25 pages. Right. So right. she had to redo well, basically resend the same motion with the application to extend to have the extension of the pages. So that's what she submitted what what last week? 
Yeah, about two weeks ago. About two weeks ago. So, so they they made they filed the motion for yeah. an extension, mm -hmm. and then okay. and that's when the when Kel's original team quit and fell out. That was part of the in that was part of what Bonjean had in her uh, motion. Um, they filed for it, and then the team fell apart. And so, uh, so then, but when they filed for it, AUSA Getty's team was like, "Nah, they had enough time. They had enough time to make it work out." And so this is where Bonjean came in saying, no, we need this extension and here's why. And so that was that 65 pages worth of stuff. And so then when the judge kicked it back and then, so that's where that back and forth. So it seems like Bonjean has submitted more than AUSA Gettys did, but she really didn't because uh, Bonjean had to respond to the judge's uh, uh, denial uh, without prejudice, which allowed her to refile it. Um, and then when it was approved for the larger pages, then she complied and sent sent everything back in. This is kind of hard to. Right. I, 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 know I, you I know remember that part. Yeah, I, remember yeah, I know that. you know about spin card because you'd be on it. You'd be on I it. This is the government's response to her, 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 her motion for a new trial and the acquittal. Right. So the 45 pages is for the their response to the uh, retrial and this 109 motion page, page, pages that was dropped is their response to the request, the motion for a quill. So this is their response. They just got in tonight, the government's. Okay, the government's is what y'all was reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, also Bonjean. Right. See, and I'm not, what I'm not clear on is what, where this falls into the, you know, the, uh, you know, the back and forth. Because we know that the last thing that Bonjean submitted was, okay, so, so what we're reading from, what we were just reading, this right here that we got up on our screen, is uh, Getty's response to what Bonjean put in Bonjean's motion for uh, acquittal. This right. 109 pages. So what we was reading before the 45 pages was the government's response to the motion for a new trial. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 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 I mean, and you know, it's been fire. You running it right. You the quite you you bring it. You helping for clarification. So that's a good question. So they the the court did what it did, and uh, Kel's old team said um, we want to. What do you say? We want a retrial or something of that nature. And uh, it was they 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 had to submit the motion for it, but they submitted it late or something of that nature. The government came in, AUSA Getty said, they don't need an extension because they've had plenty of time to do all this. No, so they didn't. No, they not, didn't. No, they, they didn't. Right. They did right. not because right. they kept complaining. What they did was they did let the judge know and put it on record that they kept complaining that they needed more time. And so with a new attorney coming in saying, right. okay, I'm needing more time. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, obviously, it's not more time. You have to understand, right. like, it's like seven or eight of them in the government. You know, they can break all that down. You know what I'm saying? Right. His legal team is three, four, two. They had issues or whatever, but it still was COVID. It was still locked down. Mm -hmm. She was the one that ruled that he couldn't be out to face these charges. And you have no merit of why you did not give him a bond. You have none. Right. You know what I mean? And I know that she, you know what I'm saying? Because he should have been out to fight this case. Because mm -hmm. he has no priors. He went to court, even regardless of what they say, he went to court the last time. These were uh, these were not uh, community violation crimes. And what I mean by that, it was not like a person who just harming the community. Right. It was Run one of the crimes. It was an acquaintance with they what you what the government call acquaintance crimes. You know what I'm saying? Almost like a you know, like you, you, you committed a crime against me, but I was interacting with you. I had a relationship with you or rapport right. with you. It wasn't like he was going around into the community. Uh, snatching young women up and all this and that. Then we got DNA evidence. It wasn't no situation like that. So there was no reason for her not to give him a bond. So she had him detained for almost three years. Mm -hmm. And then, so now that he's he was detained, he had to hear, you know, what the prison rules were. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They couldn't come in. It was COVID lockdown. It was, it was nationwide. Right. You know what I mean? Even the court is taking... Uh, precautions to where how they do the juries right well and even Bonjean had say, stated in the in the in her response that they couldn't even get zoom meetings 
They can Absolutely. even get two meetings for, two, for a whole solid two weeks. So uh, but that's going to be overturned. Even if she doesn't do the right thing with her court, the appellate court is definitely going to rule that that was just going to be overturned. You cannot. COVID is no one's. Uh, no one's. Oh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. But and here's the thing, though. But here's the thing. So, so this is where this these these uh, documents are coming back and forth because that's what this is what AUSA Gettys was trying to prevent them from being able to move forward with the extension. Her her whole uh, premise was they've had enough time, and so that's why. And I know you know the spin fire, um, uh, but that's what was was Gettys' response, and so that's what prompted. Bonjean to pull up and say, wait, wait, hold up. Let me break it down for you. The MDC was on lockdown. No Zoom calls were being allowed. Um, the, 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 the Kel's original team broke up immediately after or just shortly before the end of this trial. And so this is why I need time. So I can, I'm new. I need to familiarize myself with everything and preserve all of his appellate rights as, and, and evidence as it pertains to his ability to appeal. So so this is why, uh, so now what we're reading is in response to what um, Bonjean had stated, they're addressing the concerns that Bonjean put in that 65 page document or that 56 page document that the judge ultimately accepted and allowed in, um, in, in that motion. So this is them saying, well, no, because according to juror number four, Bonjean states that this, that, and two thirds. Well, we're here to let you know that it went down like this and it went down like that. So that's that's the stage we're in. I, I think that was a really good question because it just, at this point, before you ask it, it just seems like, you know, it's just motions all over the place. But there really is a method to the madness that we're looking at here. Right. Okay. So, okay. Cause I'm, I'm so sorry, you guys, I missed it. I've been over on something else or whatever. I really missed it. And I, I appreciate uh, Sylvia. Let me come up to hear what was going on. Um, so the government, when they were, um, how can I put this? Okay. So when the government was replying to her original motion with the, the long pages or whatever, mm -hmm. they were saying that with the jury breakdown, they were saying it went down like this, but what was the, what was their main argument with that? Like, what were they trying to say in regards to them seeing surviving R Kelly mm. and everything else? Did they address that? Well, they, we have, we didn't, we didn't get to that part yet, but bon, what Bonjean, what we did get to tonight, spit and fire is uh, where Bonjean said, I'm surprised they didn't just pull in the surviving R. Kelly docuseries as evidence and just play that in the court. Bonjean said that? She said it, girl. Mouth open? <laughs> she she, she <laughs> typed it out, boo. She typed it out. What? Yes. Hold on. Let me go to it. Let me go to it. Bonjean is not no joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jean is not no joke. Spin fire. I want to ask you this question because I know you, I know that you cover. I'm I'm actually subscribed to your channel. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, absolutely, and I know that you. Cover I think I subscribed to yours too uh, oh. when Sylvia told us to. Okay, well, I hope you did, girl, because I'll be I'll be checking you out. And mm -hmm. and that's why I'm getting ready to bring this up. I know that you, uh, you know, when Kells ain't popping, when the news ain't popping, you cover other things. I don't know. Are you hip to that uh, hashtag Save Mason TN Save Mason Tennessee? Isn't no. that a shame what they're trying to do? Yes, it a, is. A Tennessee. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold on. They're supposed to be getting some lump sum payment from. Um, yeah, it's it's deep. I, I, here's what I, I want to spin fire. This is what I want to ask you, girl. Oh, uh, Tennessee been having some issues recently. Yeah. Um, I I was covering the um, the uh, the story about the schools and what they're trying to do with the schools, but I haven't. Yeah. They was trying to do so much, and people were sending me some things, and I was right. looking up some things, but I hadn't. See, I don't know. Well, I may just, have. I don't know. Okay, so I, I do have a. Um, I did a, a podcast episode today. It's on my YouTube channel about it. I would, if you, if you, if you, if if you'll check that out, and if it resonates with you, I, I think it'd be great if we could do a collab on it because you're a logical individual, and I feel like you, you know, uh, if you feel if you feel what's going on there, I feel like you would be a great uh, voice for advocacy. Um, in in the situation, and so uh, on that episode I did today, it gives kind of like the start to finish or the start to current about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So if, if you find out about it and you're down for it, girl, could we look at doing a collab about that? 
Yeah, yes, definitely, That's definitely. Awesome. Send me, yeah. send me it's some Mason information. Is, is, uh, the town of, is, uh, see, Ford, is, is Ford Motor supposed mm -hmm. to be giving them a big lump sum? The town is a small town mm -hmm. and it's mostly black. Yep. Well, they, uh, so the controllers, uh, the state controllers are trying to take over mm -hmm. so that they couldn't, uh, so that they will be in control of that lump sum money that Ford is getting ready to get, uh, supposed to be giving them. It's a mess. Yeah, um, Ford is actually getting ready to build uh, yeah. one of the largest uh, manufacturing plants ever mm -hmm. in the state of Tennessee there. And really? so, and, and there's some drama. It's like I said, if you watch the video, I set, I set it up on, per I even have a couple guests on there, but I set it up so that the, the whole point of that episode is to give people who aren't really fully hip to that, to give them the opportunity to say, oh, from point A all the way to where we are, at least up to today. Um, okay. as to what the status is with it. And I know you've got a large platform, Spitting Fire. So if it's something that you, you know, that does resonate with you, um, you know, whether you collab with me or not, if you can pick it up, because ultimately it's impacting Black Americans. Well, send me, send me some stuff to my email. It's spittingfire18 at gmail.com. Some, can somebody put that in the chat? Or can you put it in this back chat over here? Let me see. I can put it in the private put chat. Put it in the back chat, and then I'll just okay. email you the link right now. Um, I was still trying to scroll while we now, were talking. Sylvia have it. I, I should be in her uh, contacts, but yeah. She, yeah, put it she in got information chat. on me, she can send it. Sylvia, she sli she'll go to sleep on you in a minute. Yeah, oh boy, Sylvia. Sleep. She had to mute because her husband sleeps. She said, okay, I see it. It's been fire. I'm about to, hold on. I'm about to send it to you. Send a link to your email. Yeah, she would, but she'll go to sleep on you in a minute, though. <laughs> Yeah, all night marathon going on. Yeah, she will. She will go to sleep on you in a minute. Yeah. Send you this link. Because, girl, your voice would be powerful in this case. I mean, we've had opportunity to, to um, get with the mayor and um, talk about, uh, you know, what's going on. They're they, they doing the mayor dog dirty. I'm trying to told you. They're doing them wrong down there in Mason, Tennessee. Hold on. I'm about to find this, this link for you. Um, here we go. They doing the city, and they yeah, they they doing them dog dirty. There's no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. Send me some juice, some cran apple. Is some cran apple in there? <clears throat> yeah, in my tumbler with some ice. If it's yeah, it's, it's, can they can they bring two of them? Hmm. And it brings some over here for us up here on the panel too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm trying to stay away from that soda. Right. But I love cran apple. I love too. that. I do too. Oh my God, I can't drink too. enough of it. To be the ocean spray? Yes, honey. Yes, baby. Y'all ready? Yes. Know? It ain't no other way to be. Come on. That generic just don't hit right. Second, my second favorite is cran grape and then mm. the regular cranberry. Yes, but girl. I have to have that cran apple. Absolutely. Now, let me go back. So I emailed it to you. So check your spam. Uh, okay, let me see. Fire. Let me see. I can check it right now. Okay. And uh, here it is. Oh, ah, oh, ah. See. So I got, um, I got what, uh, okay. What Bonjean put out. So let me get to this real quick. Just going to read this snippet here. Where she say this at? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, it's so like here it goes. She said, Bonjean said, but that is not all. Defendant was denied effective assistance of counsel when his attorneys failed to file adequate pretrial objections to the introduction of the mass of overly prejudicial propensity evidence and routinely failed to lodge timely objections to some, although not all. You said check spam? Yeah. Did you say check spam? Yeah. Okay. okay. Check your spam if it didn't come in. Should say Mail Cruise Company. Only Mail Cruise. You already know it. Okay. Yeah. It was why they go to spam. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, you know, if you don't get an email from somebody, you know, go. Okay. First I got second. it. Okay. Perfect. I got it. So at your, you know, and then hit me back and let me know um, or whatever. Okay, let me know. reply. Okay. Um, okay. I just reply receive. Okay, just give me a few days. I'm already behind yeah, on a whole lot of yes, stuff. Yes, I know. You I know. <laughs> I feel you. Give me a minute. I'm yeah. behind on a whole lot of stuff. Mel. Yes, ma'am. Fitting. 
Sylvia, uh, I got to get up in the early a.m., yeah. so I'm getting ready to call it a night, people. It's been fun reading with y'all. It really has. Yeah. So we'll chat on tomorrow. I'm, I'm out. Y'all have a blessed night. Oh, you you too, thank you. You too. Okay, well, I just came on in here because I just came on in here because uh, I seen everybody was on like I do the Kell sector, Mel, right, and then right. I be over there in the Manosphere main sector, whatever. Right, and I've been right. over there for the past few weeks. But now then tonight it was like everybody was doing something. I was like, wait a minute. She got the new motion in. Then this was over here happening. I ain't know which way to go. I was right. all confused. Right. But I got to sit up here and go back over here and see what these folks doing right. over here in the main sector. Right. I'm going to talk to y'all later. All right, Spin Fire Girls. All right, nice thank you, Sylvia, for come, having me come up. I'll talk to you later. Fire Absolutely. out. Absolutely. See ya. All right, Sylvia, you still on deck? I think we must be getting ready to get to a close, y'all. Uh, we're going to come back, though, I'm sure. We're gonna, we're definitely going to be back tomorrow. I just hope I get to be a part of it. I got to be in class tomorrow. Um, so if, if it goes on and I'm not here, as soon as I get out of class, uh, I'm going to be up and through here because this stuff is out of control. It's out of control. So let me see here. I don't think Sylvie went to sleep, but um, she might be in another room. Purple couch, you still on deck? <laughs> okay, so uh, the only male crew show is up here on Infamous Sylvia's channel. Um, all right, Unique Thoughts. Unique Thoughts, say me too. Good night. Um, Johnny Hickson said, tomorrow is a Cardi B reading. Nosy Grand. Good night, Nosy Grand. Rob Sancho, hell yes, she will. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Uh, text her. Yeah, I just did. Muddy said, call her. Perspective me is uh, chuckling. Perspective me, girl, you know you play a real good Tasha K, girl. I'm telling you. All right, then, Sylvie. Well, I see you in the chat saying good night. It was nice meeting all of y'all. Uh, and I guess we'll see you when we see you. <laughs>